Imagine what they're feeling. After all the theatrics and fanfare, the sensory overload of a sport's greatest spectacle. Ready. Ready. Three. Then it two. stops. That outside roar is reduced to an internal rumble. And what if becomes what is. Real season starts today, man. Deep breath here. We got a good shot at this one. I'll see you guys at the end here. Here they come. Three. 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 At the Daytona 500, it's not what you are, but who you are. Confidence is earned in here. See what dream about moments like this. Fighting our ass is off. Every driver has a skill to lift that trophy, but do they have the will to fight for it? Go, 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 go. Turned over. Hang on here, man. A chance to win the great American race. Can you imagine? See Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse on March 21st, exclusively on Prime Video. Minutes before the start of the race, the United States Air Force Thunderbirds take to the sky for the 14th consecutive year for our pre-race flyover. And the drivers get a brief respite, a few moments to visit with fans and family and friends. The champ, Ryan Blaney, Bubba Wallace, most popular, Chase Elliott, stars in the house like The Rock. And of course, what would the Daytona 500 be without the King? It's all a part of the biggest stock car race in the world, the Daytona 500 on Fox. Well, welcome to our commentary booth where Clint Boyers and my new full-time colleague is Kevin Harvick. Out of the seat and into the frying pan here beginning 2024. Now, he won the Daytona 500 in 07. Clint Boyers finished fourth in it twice. But these two will be forever interlinked because of what happened in 07. That's Harvick in the 29. Mark Martin in the 01. Here they come to the flag. Behind everything breaks loose. Is that Boyer on his roof coming across to finish at the last minute? <laughs> diving in. Yes, that's Clint Boyer. Pretty and much how our whole relationship's been right there, summed up in one final lap. Every meeting that I've been in so far, that's how he that's comes through the door <laughs> on fire. So it's been fun. All of the preseason talk settled on the Fords. Boy, the Fords are fast. The Fords can push. The Fords can take a push. They can really run. They're going to be out front, Kevin. What's it been like this week? Well, they are out front. And I think as you look at the Fords, you have a lot of experience. You have the front row with Joey Logano and Michael, Michael McDowell. And those guys have a lot of experience. But I think as we've gone through the week, have we determined if they're the fastest cars yet? I think we have. Yeah. The matter is, have they determined? I think these Toyotas are extremely fast. Very slow in qualifying. Couldn't figure it out. No show Jones on, uh, on the qualifying day. Flip the page to the duels. Holy cow. Lights out. Straight to the front they go. Think of Danny Hamlin, three-time champion. Think of Christopher Bell winning that duel. A lot of these Toyotas, uh, their teammate, Martin Shrex, junior champion. These guys are coming to the front. You're going to see a lot of them today in these Toyotas. Now, the Chevrolets have work to do because in Friday, Friday practice, the final practice, their best time in the draft was about seven tenths back of Toyota's best time, uh, while the Fords were somewhere in the middle. But it seems to us that each manufacturer will pair up their drivers to work together as best as you can make a plan, but we all know about plans. Well, there's a plan, but it, it's a matter of how long does that plan last and how many of your buddies are still around at the end of the race to execute that plan. So we've seen everybody at times look strong. We've seen Kyle Larson push well. We've seen the Fords um, feel good about their cars, but we've seen those Toyotas do things that we don't feel like that we've seen other cars do in the past. So it's going to be an interesting start to the race to see everybody get used to everything that's happening with the, all the cars on the racetrack, and that's always a big difference here. 40 years anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports to the day today. Do not count Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports out of this thing. The five car, Kyle Larson champion, also America's popular driver, Chase Elliott in this nine car. He is back, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye on Henrik Motorsports. Can they make it happen? Stay, stay out of my space. Well, I'm getting You're excited. already in my space. Well, hey, we got to get three, four wide here. It's Daytona, <laughs> baby. Richard Petty said it often and said it best. The best you can do on any given Sunday is put yourself in a position to win. Circumstances may dictate the outcome. 
Let's go trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as a Robertsdale High School Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, representing Advent Health of Central Florida, please welcome Chaplain Farzad Norian. Father in heaven, we pause for a moment to acknowledge you this afternoon and ask for your presence to be with us. Please protect and keep safe our drivers in the race today, our crew members, our officials, our fans, and their families. And Lord, please protect and bless our men and women in the military and law enforcement and their families for these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the 82nd Airborne Division All-American Chorus. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. The anticipation is palpable. Here's Joel McHale, whose Animal Control Season 2 premieres March 6th, right here on Fox. An air of refinement surrounds us. Who doesn't enjoy a little bit of class, like fine champagne, this pinky ring, or this pinky ring, or this top-heavy thermos that everybody wants so badly? I'll figure that out later. It's time to reveal the top 20 drivers of the Daytona 500 field. In row 10, Stuart Haas' own Chase Briscoe and the number 17, Chris Busher. Row 9, William Byron and the 2022 Cup Series champion, Kyle Larson. Row 8 is full of fun. Bad Brad Keselowski, who was paired up with Ty Gibbs. Zane Smith and the number 99, Daniel Suarez, make up row 7. Harrison Burton starts alongside the number 43, Eric Jones, in row six. Row five contains a guy with three names, John Hunter Nemechek, starting next to the up-and-coming two names, Carson Hosovar. Three-time Daytona 500 winner Denny Hamlin and Alex Bowman start in row four. That brings us to row three, 2022 Daytona winner Austin Sindrick and former Cup Series champion, Mr. Popular himself, Chase Elliott. In row two, the number 20 car, Christopher Bell, and a guy who is back like Jordan wearing the 4-5, Tyler Reddick. And the head of the field, Front Row Motorsports isn't just his team name, it's now his reality. Starting second, Michael McDowell. And at the very top, this guy is... It's NASCAR's opening day. It's race day for the Great American Race. This is a race with favorites, long shots, dreamers, all drivers. This is the biggest day of any of the year of NASCAR. This is the most unpredictable race, one of the biggest races in the world. This is the Daytona 500.
Yes, it is, and it's getting ready to start. Look at that packed crowd. And The Rock in a military vehicle taking a couple of celebratory laps. A wave at the crowd. And then he'll get in position to do his thing here. Been a busy week for NASCAR on Fox. We had some great features all through the week. I wish we had time to show you all of them. We don't. Uh, but here's a couple of snippets for you. So from one seven-time champion to another, congratulations on 75 years. Those were pretty nice words. I meant every single one of them. Let's go win another 500. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. This is incredible. Watch there be like something that jumps out here. <laughs> the number one thing that Bubba Wallace needs to work on this year. The mental capacity. The last three years, I was racing for like pride, right? Showing that I deserve to be here instead of enjoying that I'm here. I've been carrying a lot of self-doubt for years now. I'm over it. I'm, I'm excited to get this season started. The confidence, I'm going to bring that back this year. I want to introduce you to someone that has sold tickets at the Daytona International Raceway since it opened in 1959. And before that, she even sold tickets to the beach races with Betty Jane France. She's so famous, they even named the ticket office after her. Let's go meet Juanita Lightning Epson. How did you get the nickname Lightning? My husband gave it to me. He said he never knew when or where I'd strike. <laughs> what was the low point in 2023? The quick answer would be getting hurt, but I, I really, that, that was not the low point for me. We just were not fast enough, you know, ultimately at the end of the day. The suspension. Yeah, had that too. What's something you learned from that experience? Anytime you're sitting at home, Watching your car go around the racetrack is uh, is not how you want to spend your week. What would success be for Chase Elliott in 2024? Everybody wants to win 10 races and lead all the laps and win the championship. I, but think, I think there's a but in here <laughs> um, for sure. You have to be among that group of guys right now that when the race is over, no one's surprised they won. Your 2023 NASCAR Cup Series champion is Ryan Blaney. You know my dad, right? He's yeah. not a very emotional guy. He got choked up a little bit in victory lane, which was good. I was hoping I was, yeah. I was like, yes, there he I had is. to choke up a little bit. <laughs> my dad told me when I first was gonna get into the sport, he said, do what you can to leave it better than when you got there. And being the champion, you know, I think is gives me more opportunities to do that. I'm excited to do those things. I'm gonna add one more name to the list. I think old Ryan Blaine is gonna be a good champ. Oh, appreciate it, Clint. Cheers. Cheers. Did your dads give you pointers when it comes to racing? My dad message says, keep the wheel straight, guys. Keep the wheel straight. You spun me out. You spun him out? Yes, he what? did, and they got in a big fight. It's gonna spin in front of the field and collect a couple. You got a fight. Oh. Young drivers, start your engine. Whoa, easy, easy, easy. Oh, man, those kids are good. Is it over between you and Kyle Busch? Well, I don't think it's ever over. I feel like this was a good test for my first interview. Yeah. So let's say you don't win the Daytona 500. Well, that would suck. I know. You've been so close so many times, and yeah. you've freaking won everything in yeah. this sport. Are you happy with everything that you've been able to accomplish in your career? I would say so. The two championships at the end of the season is a greater feat in my book, but there's still some other really, really great race car drivers who never won the Daytona 500, and yet they're Hall of Famers. I wouldn't say that I would be accepting of that here today, Yeah. but at least one of these days it's got to fall my way, right? So is it over? You grilled him pretty hard. Well, I don't I don't think it's over for Kyle Busch. I think he's going to be in the game today. And But I just want to say thank you to Kyle Busch for not just completely torching me on my first interview. No, I meant was I it over for you and him. Yeah. That for your first interview. Yeah. Boy, that was, I mean, you guys, I thought it, you told him you was going to dot his eye one time. Well, it, you know, you got to do what you got to do while you're racing. awesome interview. So. Loved it. Moments ago, Jamie Little caught up with a rock. 
Mike, how cool is this? The Rock is with us to help kick off the NASCAR season. And on March 30th, you are going to help kick off the UFL. Yes. Tell us about this new league and what you expect. Uh, well, first of all, I, I got to say it's awesome to be here. So for everybody at home, I just if you haven't been to a race, you got to go because this is incredible. Uh, now, as for the UFL, cannot wait. The United Football League, I expect great football, passionate football. We all believe in spring football. We have the great support of the NFL, but most importantly than that, uh, we have the great support of the fans. And the idea that we're going to create more opportunities for players and their families is really all that matters. We can't wait to see it. All right, everybody knows you are the people's champion. <laughs> so as you look at 100,000 people here, you're about to give the most famous words in racing. What's going through your mind? Uh, th again, I have chills. This is incredible. There's a word I like to use all the time uh, called mana, and you could feel the mana on the track on this pavement, over 100,000 people. The people are going crazy. I'm honored to be the Grand Marshal uh, to say those words. And what I love most, I met all the drivers. They're just, they're so uh, amazing and welcoming. But what you realize, they're all after that shot at greatness. And I, I, I cannot wait for the race to start. We're so happy you're with us. Go do your thing. Yes, ma'am. Here all we right. go. He'll bring the energy, Mike. Great to have him here. Well, yeah, and when we had him on yesterday's show, man, talk about Mana. I felt the mono when he walked up, the presence of that great, huge human. I mean, the specimen that he is. He told us he was in bed at midnight and got up and worked out. I guess that's what it takes to be that big. Well, we definitely won't see you getting up at midnight to go into the gym. But we know that we know that Rock is the Rock is here. And when he talks about the hype and excitement and everything that is going on at the Daytona 500 and he can feel it, you know that the, the energy is high. Mana. 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 At this moment, 30 drivers, maybe more think I have a good chance to win the Daytona 500 and the other 10 I've got a shot if I can stay in that lead draft it could happen this is the ultimate test you have to battle adversity attrition comes into play a little bit of luck into the Daytona 500 everything Kevin has to be perfect well the biggest thing that is different from the Daytona 500 and the start of it is all the hype the anticipation and that enthusiasm that I believe all 40 drivers feel like they can win the race so this is always the hardest part was always the hardest part for me was controlling those emotions to start this race we've seen it all first time winners they can win it. Everybody on this racetrack can pull it off today. Let's enjoy a few moments of silence. The last we'll have for the next nearly four hours here in Daytona. Let's go trackside to the Rock and U.S. Army Chief of Staff, General Randy George. Daytona International Speedway. This is a moment you have all been waiting for. Here to give the command of fire engines is actor, entrepreneur, founder, and United Football League co-owner, the Grand Marshal for the 66th running of the Daytona 500, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. In the proud spirit of America, and in the proud spirit of our great country, finally, The Rock says, Drivers, start your engines! We are 500 miles from history here in Daytona. Green flag next. Welcome back to Daytona. Closing in on the start of the 500, there is U.S. Army Chief of Staff, General Randy George, here for the pre-race ceremonies. And we've had quite an air show from the Air Force Thunderbirds. My gosh, everybody's ducked at least twice. Here's the starting lineup for the 65th Daytona 500. It's an all Ford front row with the 2015 winner Joey Logano for Team Penske and the 2021 winner Michael McDowell. Let's check in with Joey Logano. Hey, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick up in the Fox Sports booth. You're on the pole, buddy. Tell us what you plan to do to stay there. <laughs> That's the million dollar question right there. A lot of things can happen at 500 miles, but I got a great Shell Penzo Mustang. Looks good out front. Another Mustang with me there. So we'll try to work together the best we can to uh, Stay towards the front, get through the pit cycles, and get through the stages, and ultimately be there at the end. All right, buddy. Good luck today. Put on a show for us. 
I'll be a show no matter what. Enjoy it. All right, row two. Both of the dual winners for this week, Tyler Reddick, number 45, and the 20 of Christopher Bell. Row number three is six-time most popular driver, Chase Elliott, and 2022 Daytona 500 winner, Austin Sendrick. Row four, Alex Bowman, who finished fifth last year from the pole, and three-time Daytona 500 winner, Denny Hamlin. Let's dial up old Denny Hamlin. Hey, Denny Hamlin, it's Boyer and the boys up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? 10-4, I got you. All right, man, three-time Daytona 500 winner. The Toyotas, they all seem lights out this week in Daytona. How about this stat? Do you realize winning today would tie you with the legend himself, Kale Yarbrough, for second all-time right here at the Daytona 500? What would that mean to you? Well, I mean, he's probably the best driver that ever drove the 11, that's for sure. So I'd love to have that uh, company for sure. Um, we're going to have to have a little luck to go our way to have it all happen, but uh, I can say you know, we've got as good a shot today as we've ever had. All right, buddy. Good luck. Go get him out there. Thank you, guys. Row number five, the youngest driver in the field with Carson Hosovar, and starting 10th is John Hunter Nemechek. All right. Row number six, that Jones boy, number 43, Eric Jones. How about 21, proud of the Wood Brothers, Harrison Burton. Row seven, Daniel Suarez finished seventh last year, and the 2022 truck champion, rookie Zane Smith. Row number eight is Ty Gibbs, 2023 Rookie of the Year, and Brad Keselowski, 2012 Cup Series champion. Row number nine, the number five, Kyle Larson, 23 Cup wins, but none here. His teammate, William Byron, on his outside in the 24 car. Starting 19th is Chris Buescher. And starting 20th is Chase Briscoe, who finished third in 2022. All right, row number 11, Bush Beer all the way. How about my beer fans out there? Ross Chastain off the chain, and Justin Haley on his outside in 51. Row 12, Hall of Famer Jimmy Johnson is back to run the 500. He's paired up with Bubba Wallace, a two-time Daytona 500 runner-up. Josh Sims. Well, Mike, seven-time cup champion Jimmy Johnson has never been in a situation like the one he was this week, having to race his way into the Great American Race. He said he hasn't been that nervous in a very long time, but he survived the wreck to race his way into the Daytona 500. The work wasn't done there. Damage to the car. They were able to fix it during practice. He feels good about it. Now, remember, Jimmy races part-time these days, much less experience than the rest of the drivers in this next-gen car. What he does have experience in, Winning the Daytona 500, Jamie, he's done it twice. Well, Josh, Bubba Wallace was one of the many drivers that had damage in the dual races on Thursday night. And because of that, he will start mid-pack today. But don't count him out. This 30-year-old has a knack for this style of racing. He's finished runner-up here in the Great American Race two different times. Can you imagine the storyline if he could deliver the ultimate trophy to his boss man, the legend, Michael Jordan? Rolling off 25th today, a guy who rolled over 10 times here last August, Ryan Priest, and Kaz Grala, who raced his way in in the duels on Thursday. Row number 14, he's a champion, folks. Number 19, Martin Truex Jr., been here a long time, yet to get his Daytona 500 win. On his outside, number 16, A.J. Allmendinger. Row 15, Corey LaJoy, is he your sleeper pick? He runs really well here. And 33-year-old rookie in the number four, Josh Berry. Row 16 is Todd Gilliland and our 2023 Cup Series champion, Ryan Blaney. Row number 17, everybody loves the number three. Austin Dillon driving at this time, 2018 Daytona 500 winner. And his teammate on his outside, number eight, Kyle Busch. Here's Regan Smith. Well, Mike Kyle Busch is perhaps NASCAR's fiercest competitor, and he has used that fierceness to gain 63 wins and two championships. But the one that has eluded him is the Daytona 500. Much like last year, a crash in Thursday's qualifying races has relegated him to a backup car. But also, much like last year, the team feels great about that backup car and the chances of him getting to the front with it and perhaps claiming that first Daytona 500 win. 35th, the 2023 500 winner, Ricky Stenhouse in the 47. And from Las Vegas, Riley Herbst, who finished 10th in last year's 500. Row 19th, making his third Daytona 500 start is Daniel Hemrick, and right behind him is Noah Gregson. 
Rounding out the field, Road 20, Anthony Alfredo locked himself in a qualifying night, and on his outside, David Reagan and out RFK car. Entry for this thing, the third entry for RFK. Keep an eye on David. He'll be marching to the front. These drivers will go to the rear because they've had to move to a backup car, largely after what happened at the conclusion of one of Thursday's qualifying races. Let's show it to you. Watch the yellow number 12 of Ryan Blaney get turned and take a savage hit into the outside wall measured at 55 G's. Man, it still hurts, Kevin. And it's on fire, too, so there is nothing good about that, and, and we're just glad to see Ryan get out of that car. Ryan climbed out okay, practiced Friday, now has a new helmet and a new car. Let's check in with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds, and a look at aerodynamics. Yeah, Mike, anytime you're at a high speed super speedway like Daytona, to be faster, it's all about the draft. The more cars you can get in the line, the faster you're going to run. So let's take a look at airflow at our Toyota Cutaway Camry car. Here's is a single car right here. This is what the airflow will look like. You're going to see max downforce on the front of the car as well as in the rear of the car in that rear spoiler area. That actually more downforce and hurts the drag. But as a car approaches that lead car, you're going to see the airflow change. It takes downforce away and it gives it less drag, which makes them run faster as one unit. Look at the hood flaps as the pressure changes on that trail car. That's the reason they come up. Now, the more cars you can line up the faster you're going to run mike this is why after a green flag pit stop you want to make sure you have a partner to draft with to maximize that speed after leaving pit road thanks larry safety in numbers well it, it is safety in numbers and, and when you look at that graphic when you see that hood flap stand straight up you know you're doing a good job but you need your team of manufacturers to do what you need to do to stay in the front and even get to the front if you're not already there strength in numbers that's right <laughs> yes all right it's time for toyota rev up to green Toyota is proud to be pacing the great American race with a new Toyota Camry XSE, which continues to be proudly built in Georgetown, Kentucky. With this innovative new look, TRD and County Design work collaboratively to imitate many of the production Camry striking features on the new Toyota Camry XSE NASCAR Cup Series race car, including the distinctive Toyota Hammerhead front fascia, the latest version of the Toyota Camry, which has been the best-selling sedan for 21 straight years, is scheduled to hit showroom floors later this spring. It is a beautiful day in Daytona. It's Bill France weather, as they said. First uh, almost 60 years of this race, it was never rained out. 60 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 12. Track temp due to the sunshine, 90 degrees. And how about this crowd? They're going to run the Xfinity race tonight, about an hour after the 500 concludes. And Daytona Speedway President Frank Kelleher said, if you have a ticket for either race, come on for the day. I'm see so happy, both. so happy to see this crowd. Hey, they, did, they waited it out with us. It torrential downpour, ladies and gentlemen. I saw tents underwater out there. It didn't slow our people down. They're here to see these boys put on a show, and that's exactly what they're going to see. 200 laps, 500 miles is the scheduled distance, and the race will be run in three stages of 65, 65, and 70 laps. Now, each of those stages are longer than the cars can go on fuel, so we'll have at least one pit stop in every stage. Well, we know they built a few of the new Toyota Camry XSE, one in that feature, and here's one out here leading the field. Big lower grill area with C-shaped corner vents, a hood with new character lines and duct exits, updated thinner tail lights, cool piece in showrooms this summer. Well, the coolest piece is that nose on that Camry that it pushes really, really well. On the race car. On the race car. Yes. Yeah. Don't push the pace car. Big difference <laughs> that body's made in what we've seen here down here at Daytona. All right. Joey Logano, the pole sitter, has chosen the outside lane for the start. Here is Michael McDowell alongside. 
You've done a great job all week. Go do what we uh, came here to do. Uh, just great effort. 500 miles. It's what we all dreamed of. Daytona 500. Doesn't get any bigger, any cooler, any better than this. So take it in, enjoy it. But let's uh, let's go do what we came here to do. That's a confidence you don't always hear in Michael McDowell, but you hear it at Daytona. Daytona 500 champ, boy knows how to get this thing to the end of this thing and be a part of that picture when you come off a of turn four for that magical moment. Yeah, the one thing I've really noticed about Michael is he's just become that leader. When he talks and, and he tries to uh, do the things that he does, he's very calm, like you say, but he's become a leader. And, and you've seen this team progress over the last couple of years. They just keep getting better and better. And they've been rewarded by Ford with that tier one uh, support and all the things that they're going to get from their manufacturer as well. Now, good luck to the spotters up on the roof above us, three quarters of a mile away from where these cars are now, telling those two yellow cars apart if they both stay up front. Well, one's got a hearts all over it. Oh, will that? <laughs> I mean, surely we can we can pick the ones with the hearts out, don't you think? All right. Well, I want to know what, Kevin, what's your heart rate right now compared to last year's Daytona 500 in the seat of the number four? My heart rate's still high because I know what those guys are feeling coming to the green flag. The, the anticipation, your heart rate, and that's one thing that we will talk about as this race starts is the anxiety of coming to the green flag at the Daytona 500. Off turn four in the 31 degree banking in the 1200 foot short shoot. Pace car will take a hard left turn now. And they will face the green flag for 200 laps, 500 miles to start the 2024 season. Green flag, the Daytona 500 is underway. Still building speed in the back straightaway. Well, they're building speed, Mike, but the one thing I can tell you about the start of this race that all the drivers are going through is going to be experiencing the speed of the pack that they haven't experienced all week. All 40 cars in the pack, they've only raced against half the field so far, and right now they're all lined up, building speed, but speed that they haven't felt before this week. I think this weather is going to play a role in it, Mike. You told us about the weather. Sun's out. You can see it shining down on this racetrack and on these cars. These boys are going to have their hands full here in a few laps, and these things start slipping, sliding around, and tires wear out. And after two solid days of soaking rain, you don't want to end up in that infield grass. That will be a difficult escape. Well, we qualified at night. We raced in the duels at night. You see the sun shining like like Clint is going, uh, like Clint is uh, talking about, and these guys are going to experience that as they get. 10, 12, 15 laps into this run. But the thing I can tell you is it will also go through a bigger swing today because of the fact that we're starting in the sun and going to end in the dark. They're lined up like the pace lap, but they're doing 186 miles an hour. Man, Clint, there is there is nothing like the sound of these race cars when they come by you and you hear those cars come by our cameras and rattle in the cameras and the speed of the cars as as they as they uh, go down the back straightaway there. There is nothing like it. And the drivers are still kind of still a little bit tense. Well, right now it's bumper to bumper traffic as we know it, right? Nowhere to go, just follow the leader. Shortly, you're gonna start seeing, we got a pair of Fords in the front, Toyota's the second row. You see a Pinsky card, you know that's a Logano teammate. These boys are gonna start finding each other. It's just a matter of when and how. And it's just like they experienced Thursday night. The, the beginning of this race is really how does my car feel? Is it hitting the ground? Does it, does, am I comfortable in the seat steering? And we see the same excitement that that little guy uh, sees in the grandstands uh, sit, watching our screen right here. The other thing about this race in particular, you know, we've watched the duels. I heard you say that that's a half a field, half a pack. This is the first time all of these guys have felt their cars running this speed. Larry showed us how much of a difference just one car makes behind. Can you imagine a whole field? 40 cars back there making it. All right, here's the first breakout up in turn number three. Three wide, about seven or eight rows back. Things starting to move in mid-pack. 
Ross Chastain was the first to break out. Out to the outside. There you see his blue and white number one with Josh Berry behind him. Well, that's the two strategies that the, that the other drivers are on in the back of the pack. How do I get to the front? You know, and Ross Chastain's like, man, I'm going to tow this pack with me. And you see a lot of guys in that outside line lined up behind him wanting to be aggressive and get to the front of this pack fast. Well, he ain't the only one either. Other guys will get greedy. You see Brad Keselowski in that six car jumped up in front of him. He won't be the only one coming to the front. John Hunter Nemechek, the 42. He's looking up high. Maybe perhaps trying to hold the both the middle and the high lane back in his 42. Can't be iffy in these decisions, Kevin. That spotter says clear up. You better be there. Oh, crash! Two cars slam together, and Harrison Burton takes a wild ride through the grass and up into more traffic, gets tagged, turned around, and five cars are in it. Ryan Priest. I think he missed that inside wall. Harrison Burton, big damage on the 21 car. And Carson Hosevar, the rookie, uh, gets taken out into that very, very wet grass in the ball field. Well, the Wood is... Brothers trying for their 100th ever NASCAR win, and Harrison Burton gets tagged and sent. Well, this is exactly what you don't want to see happen. Something early in this race where everybody's trying to race hard, and we just talked about those guys going to that third lane, and it puts those guys in the middle lane in a bad spot with the handling of their cars that they hadn't really been in. Let's see what happened, Clint. Watch the 21, Harrison Burton. Okay, you see Harrison Burton in the middle of that three-wide conversation we're talking about, and we are also talking about John Hunter Nemechek kind of being iffy on his move. Now the 42, John Hunter Nemechek on the outside of Burton. The green and white car, and Brad Kozlowski, and he make contact. Kozlowski got to his rear bumper, just took a little bit of a love tap, turned him sideways, kind of look, looked to me like he was on the left corner of that bumper, turned him right down into Harrison Burton. Well, and it's just what we were talking about, Clint, with everybody trying to feel out exactly what their cars were doing, and those guys in the middle didn't, didn't have anything to do with the handling. So, you know, you, you, you see Brad into the back. Oh, yeah, you're exactly right, Clint. The 42 car of John Hunter Nemechek just got up a little higher. Brad was probably trying to stay square and being pushed by the guy behind him, and they just got a little bit offset right there. Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson among those with damage in this one. We're six laps in at Daytona. It's not too late to play the NASCAR Super 6 Challenge. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in cash prizes and VIP tickets to next year's 500. Here are the cars with at least some damage in this crash. Kaz Grala uh, was the car Harrison Burton came up and slammed into when he came back up onto the racetrack. Uh, Austin Dillon also got some damage, as did Jimmy Johnson. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek at the uh, front of this, and rookie Carson Hosevar. Is Johnson at rest? All right, let's have a look at how and where this gets started. Yeah, and this, you called this, Mike. This starts right here with John Hunter Nemechek as he tries to, as he tries to block this upper line right here, Brad Keselowski coming. Brad sees he's middle of the road. You see him check up right there. And it checks the whole lineup. Well, as he checks up, the one car of Ross Chastain's right on his bumper, ships him back forward with a with a run of speed. And John Hunter's up a little bit higher than Brad Keselowski is. They get their bumpers off center, and off it goes. There's Hosevar tangled up with Burton's number 21. He comes back up the blue and white car. Wham! Kaz Growler. Wham! Austin Dillon. Jimmy Johnson uh, got involved a little further back, and Ryan Priest slides right past the end of pit road but did not contact the wall. We're lucky it didn't tear up any more cars. And that look how many cars are behind him. Three wide. You look up and see Harrison Burton sideways, Kevin, six laps into this race. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, and I, as I was watching them slide through the grass, I was hoping they didn't do this and come back up the racetrack. Uh, you see that's where all the cars got torn up. I, Jimmy Johnson's cars, it just depends on that left front tire and if the toe is knocked out or uh, I see him with the hood up on pit road. but. Harrison Burton, what a terrible break for the Wood Brothers and everything that you prepare for over the last three months. And, and we see this race go that time every once in a while. Um, just these early wrecks that sometimes start with just people trying to go and trying to move forward. 
Burton would have been okay, but for coming back up on the racing surface, obviously couldn't slow down. Kaz Grala thought he had the high line clear, and he did until Burton got there. A lot of damage here. Let's ride with Jimmy Johnson. Terrible feeling. Smoke. Yeah, and he just that's a pretty good shot. Yeah, it's more that was I a thought. that was a lot harder than I thought. Yeah. I feel so bad for Harrison Burton riding in the middle doing nothing wrong minding his own business. Those guys were three wide on his outside kind of stacked that line up a little bit. No nothing he could do at all. And the one thing you notice from Jimmy Johnson's car is he was in the back of the pack there with this particular car. You can't just hang back like you like you used to. You have to be somewhat close to the pack. You see Ryan Priest sliding through there. Harrison Burton's radiator and ductwork, everything fly out of the front of the car. That's a good point, Kevin. You know, in years past, back in the day, you just ride around back far enough, knowing that that's going to happen, that you could get out of harm's way. You'll lose a draft if you lag back too far. Kaz Grala, the Boston native, hauled back to the garage, repairs for Austin Dillon and Jimmy Johnson. Pit road is open. Here they come, Josh. For Michael McDowell in to top off with fuel only. Whoa, that was close with William Byron right there. Jamie? And Bubba Wallace, they knew right away they wanted to come in and pit. They said all we need is two seconds of fuel and go, wow, there's all kinds of chaos down here, Mike. Guys, this is this is worst case scenario because of all the cars on pit road and nobody's nobody's out of the race and, and every every pit stall is occupied, but everybody wants to keep these cars full of gas in order to put themselves in a great position. Now Corey LaJoy, AJ Allmendinger, uh, William Byron and Todd Gilliland took tires. Most everybody else was gas only. First caution of the day comes out working lap six. John Hinnernewicek into Harrison Burton. Big crash. Is this the start of a dynasty? Ryan Blaney is an NASCAR Cup Series champion. A redemption tool. Ready to go to work. Is this the face of a ruthless competitor or a villain? I'd be your favorite driver. Is it time for a breakthrough? Let's go! To get back to breaking stuff? Hey, or is this the makings of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? It's all of the above, and it's about to go down. Any questions? The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Wendy's Breakfast, two for three biggie bundles are here. Your perfect duo, just $3. Ten laps complete in Daytona. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Goodyear blimp on hand for the Daytona 500. Helping us with aerial coverage, the field in turn three, coming to the green this time. Christopher Bell is the first off pit road in his Toyota, and series champ Ryan Blaney's Ford alongside, or he, actually Bell was not the first off pit road. He did not pit, nor did Blaney, nor Daniel Hemrick. They stayed out to gain track position. And boy, did they. Talking about Blaney and Hemrick up 36, 34 spots. Big pickup. Knee track position, found it. Pace car is in. We begin lap 12. Cars both removed to the garage. I believe everybody else was able to continue. Well, that's either going to be a wake up call for everybody, and this is going to calm down, or that's just going to set the tone for this whole race with chaos and pushing and shoving. We know we're going to see pushing and shoving, but with that third line, that was a bit of a surprise that early for me. I agree with that, and I think it'll be the first one that you just offered. I think it's going to calm them down a little bit. We're going to settle in. 500 miles is a long time. And Carson Hosevar, the rookie, has taken his car to the garage also from that. 
Jimmy Johnson and Austin Dillon are two laps down while Ryan Priest stays on the lead lap. Hosevar and Burton have been released from the care center. And now it all resets. We see Christopher Bell and Ryan Blaney at the front of this pack. Uh, Daniel Hemrick at the front of the pack, like you guys talked, didn't pit, stayed up front. That's a, that's a call from the crew chief to say, hey, we need to do something early to establish ourselves at the front of the pack and hope that you have enough guys to pit with you or you have uh, another caution fall your way. And, and I would tell you that I would much rather be at the front, Mike, than at the back. I feel like it's safer. Regan, how about Blaney's move to the front? Well, my crew chief, Jonathan, Jonathan Hassler, said exactly what he would do earlier today. He said, I'm going to be very aggressive if there's a yellow early in the race or as green flag, set, green flag cycles present themselves. That's what he did right here to get his driver up front. But part of the reason he could do that, Ryan Blaney very happy with the car as it is right now. A little loose in the corners, meaning the back sliding, otherwise good. A.J. Allmendinger having difficulty, a drive through penalty. Uh, right here on pit road. See Austin Dillon headed to the garage area in that three car. Such a bummer. Former Daytona 500 winner. Out of it here. Uh, Almendinger was penalized, given a drive through penalty for not lining up properly for the restart. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek served a penalty for equipment violation. And William Byron, to get into his pit stall, had to make a late dive outside another car, ended up in the wrong pit box. So he restarted tail end of the longest line as well. Yeah, pit road looked like we were still in Los Angeles. It would look dangerous out there. Watching him, Rick, and, and Blaney pull that off and get this track position virtually going from the tail back to the front leading this pack, Kevin. I'm kind of surprised some other teams didn't elect to try that. Well, we're racing towards stage one, and, and everybody knows that there are points on the line. I know we're racing for the Daytona 500 and, and everything that we need to do, but you got to put yourself in whatever you think is the best position to not have to put tires on, to not have to, um, you know, to put the least amount of fuel into it. And, and but you got to have track position. You, you want to be able to be in control of this race. And that was always something that Rodney Childers and myself talked about when I was still driving the car. How do we establish ourselves at the front of the field to be in charge of, of the race and, and be able to make decisions and control the lines and do everything that you need to do? So I'd much rather be in the front. Being in the middle is, is easier and riding in the back is easy, but you got to learn and race and do the things that it takes in order to be in position and know what to do at the end of this race to win. Brian Blaney is not just the defending Cup Series champion. He is a third generation racing champ. Let's go under the helmet with Ryan Blaney. I was born in Hartford, Ohio. My favorite driver growing up, besides my dad, I was a big Jimmy Johnson fan. I don't really treat myself a lot. I don't really... I, my, my fiance, she always asked me, what do you want for Christmas? I was like, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I'm fine. I was like, well, if we win a championship, we'll get a pool. She's been harping on me for a pool. Pool, 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 pool for like a year and a half. I was like, all right, I'll make a deal. We win the championship. This is like in June. Are we at a pool? Win the championship. And like, one of the first things I said to her on stage, I'm like, well, I guess we're getting that pool after all. <laughs> so. <laughs> better get the hole. Better, better get the hole, Doug. It's time for a pool, buddy. Champion leading the pack of the Daytona 500. Still a tall order. Still a lot of things have to go right here. Still uh, the stage end at lap 65, as you see, probably still going to have to pit, maybe without a cost or something else. A lot of business to be done in our green five stop yet. Jamie, how about our pole sitter? Yeah, Ryan Blaney's teammate Joey Logano delivered the captain, Roger Penske, his first ever Daytona 500 pole. That was a big moment for them. And the car has just been so good. In fact, even in practice, they tried a completely different setup, and they went back to what they unloaded with. And now, guys, after leading, they did pick, got fuel only. Now he's saying just a little bit free as he feels the car out in traffic. Josh? Well, Jamie, I talked to Christopher Bell last year going into the Daytona 500, told me he is not a fan of Super speedway racing we turned that into a third place finish his best ever in the daytona 500 came back this year won his duel so he's getting much better at this style of racing talk to him today still not a fan but he said the confidence is growing and you see him running up front right now guys did you see how he was holding the wheel right there kevin yeah i did we both grabbed it each other hey what was that 
Just a little bit of, hey, 500 miles is a long time. And long you, way to the house. And you hear Christopher Bell, the, the report there from Josh, talk about not liking super speedway racing. That's not uncommon. There's a lot of guys, I was one of them, didn't really like super speedway racing, but you have to put yourself in this unique mindset when you get here. And mine was always this. I have a 50-50 chance of finishing this race. So I'm either going to have a good day or I'm going to wind up in the garage with the wrecker towing me in. So that was just, I know that's always. You only gave yourself 50% chance? Boy, I always lied to myself. I 50%. said, boy, we're going to win this thing. I don't know how yet, but somehow, some way, we're going to win. Then ended up upside down on fire. <laughs> 18 laps complete. Christopher Bell's Toyota side by side with Ryan Blaney's Ford for the lead. The XFL in the United States Football League have announced plans to merge. A move that ensures spring football is here to stay. This is an iconic moment. An excitement for fans all the country. Let's ball out, baby! This will bring together two of the best spring leagues we've ever seen. It's a win for football and for fans. The United Football League has arrived. There's no doubt spring just got stronger. Here we go. 22 laps complete in Daytona. Christopher Bell leading Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, and Daniel Hemrick. Every lap that ends in a one is a chance for you to win one of 500 prizes being given away throughout the race courtesy of Bush Light. Follow at Bush Beer on X and enter using hashtag Bush Tona 500 hashtag sweepstakes. Now this is kind of weird seeing the Bush Light on the car actually going around the racetrack and not driving it. But um, they're in a better sponsor that that activates and does everything better in this sport than Bush Light. So they had a had a great run with them and. I'm glad they're still on a car on the racetrack. And they'll do a great job with Ross. Clint, put your phone down. You're not eligible. Well, I, I sure wish I was. <laughs> I know a guy, though. I know okay. a guy, Mike. <laughs> we'll get you fixed up. Yeah. All right. Here we go. We got we got Denny Hamlin's foot cam here, Clint. We see both both feet there. He, he, you always want to keep the brake pedal foot right here. Very close because anything can can happen really quick here on the super speedways and you see his right foot uh, the other one modulating that throttle pedal. And you see the percentage up top and this is all about the strategy of fuel and everything that it takes in order to put yourself in a position to do what you need to do on pit road in as little as time as possible that we will see coming up here in a few. Oh I don't know probably what how many laps Clint. It won't be long I can tell you this it won't be the end of that stage. Well, we saw Denny Hamlin win the other night uh, in the duel, doing the strategy that he's doing right now. Let's hear what the five car has to say. We are going to be close to being able to make it, especially with what you're saving right now. The two front cars did not pit, and they're kind of screwing themselves because if saving, they still cannot make it, but they're going to help all of us be able to make it. So keep doing what you're doing. That's why I love Cliff Daniels. Always given the information only needed to that driver, Kyle Larson. He is so good at the communication of not, not you know, just overwhelming him, but telling him exactly what you need to say. And by the way, he's exactly spot on. Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, I've been watching the throttle trace on the top three, Bell, Blaney, and Hemrick. That's the three drivers that did not pit under that last caution. And you, I think about Bell and Hemrick, they're modulating the throttle quite a bit. But Ryan Blaney is just steady, right about 65% throttle. Right now, it looks like he can probably go about another 23 or 24 laps in that 12 car. So he played the hand, right? The hand that they had. He got to track position without a caution or some help here. He's probably not going to make this stage end in a good fashion. Well, and this isn't easy. When, you, when you're leading the race like this and having to manage the fuel, and what happens when you have one of those early cautions and it puts you in a window to be able to make it to the end uh, of, of, in this case, stage one, it makes everybody want to be in that position to, to win the stage because in the end, you're racing the first stage here for your points for the whole year and we've seen people miss it by one point two point three points Ryan Blaney uh, beat Martin Truex Jr. Uh, in 2022 by three points so hey you got to do what you got to do to put yourself in the right window might not be 
uh, the same for everybody. When you look at Christopher Bell uh, and those guys who did not pit, I don't think they can make it to the end of the stage, and, and that's going to put them in a, in a really bad position. But it's like Cliff Daniels said, it's helping everybody else in the field out that they're doing that. Well, after what happened at lap six and the big crash that took four cars out of this race, is that why we're not seeing anybody break out who could run faster on the outside and form up a third lane? Well, you don't want to you, want, you don't want to be the guy that has to pit. And if you have to pit and everybody else doesn't pit, everything you've worked towards in trying to get to the end of the stage and put yourself in position uh, kind of goes out the window. But if you're on pit road and they're under green and uh, you, you know, you have a little bit of trouble, you'll be a lap down. So you should be able to, to pit and be really close to not being a lap down. But if you have just one little hiccup, you're going to be a lap down and, and then you're really going to have some trouble. So you, it's a long race. You have to be smart. Uh, we saw these guys go hard early trying to trying to put themselves in position and we got a whole bunch of torn up race cars already. I still like the gamble. It was worth it. This point in a 500 mile race, you know that you're not going to go a lap down, even if you have to pit and they don't, whatever the case may be. It's not that big of a risk, I think. I think the reward is big time. 34 spots they found right now. Well, the big thing that worries me is it's, it's what, seven, eight laps? I didn't I didn't notice the number before, um, you know, it all went off. It's it's a pretty big number, Clint, that that difference in laps that you're going to have to pit earlier to be able to go out there and have to run with three cars. That's I, basically what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to run with three cars. And, and we know, like we saw in the beginning, the, the more cars you stack in that line, the faster that line's going to go. So I'm just worried about their speed if they have to pit by themselves. Uh, Larry told me, no worry. I don't think they're going to, they're not going to go a lap down. I still think the risk versus reward, it was worth it. Now worth here's something. Try. Here's something we've not seen at Daytona. Usually if you lose the draft, you'll fall back further, further, further back. But with the pace being set right now, A.J. Allmendinger, who had to have a drive through penalty and is out on track by himself, is lapping faster than the pack. He may catch them. Well, he's hoping that he catches them. Sure. Yeah, we see that the pace is, um, you know, a 51, a 51, 31. And, and there's going to be um, a lot of times we run in the, the 47s uh, with, with, with the whole pack. So that is. Uh, that is a you know tremendous amount of fuel that needs to be saved, but it's it's all part of the strategy. It's all part of the game. Six laps into this race, the strategy changed dramatically after this. John Hunter Nemechek into Harrison Burton, into Ryan Priest, back up the track, melee. Yeah. 32 laps complete. Blaney, Bell, Hemrick out front. Here's a special moment earlier in pre-race. U.S. Army Chief of Staff General Randy George and Dwayne The Rock Johnson took a ride around the track in an Army ISV up on the banking there. Well, this race has completely changed. While we were at break, it became go time, and the front four drivers took off from the pack. Here's Christopher Bell's audio. Now, let's try to fix the pace up here. Well, it's like they listened and heard Cliff Daniels say that to his driver, Kyle Larson. He told him that very thing. Them holding it back on us, 60% throttle is only helping us. The card that uh, Blaney, Bell, and those guys have with this, Nail it. Go for it. Let's go wide open. Drive off from these guys. Force them and their hand to try to pit with us. Don't give them the leverage. Yeah, and the other thing that, that has happened in the middle of the pack, there were guys like, oh, this is going to be a great time that I can make up some track position. Let's drive to the front. And then the guys that were already there were like, well, I don't want to give up my track position, so we need to go a little bit faster. So there's a there's a bunch of different agendas on everything that's happening, but the 12 car and Christopher Bell of Ryan Blaney and a 20 car of Christopher Bell put everybody back in a decision-making process to say, okay, do we want to keep our track position and try to keep up, or do we just want to sit back here and ride? But it, it kind of forced everybody's hand, and those guys are just going to have to do what they need to do and not help everybody. Yeah, totally. It was only benefiting the cars that pitted, not them. So the top 10 on the restart are still the top 10. However, that long run, four drivers actually got completely away from the field before everybody else picked up. And now Joey Logano's pulling that outside lane back to the front again. Now we have a race. 
Ah, uh, you can see everybody turning them horses loose and going for it. Logano, big runs on the outside off his teammate Cindric behind him. Now you see three Penske cars on the outside of Blaney pulling up. Yeah, and what, what happened in the pits is everybody's going to say, well, we got this much savings and we can go this far. So it obviously looks like everybody feels like they need to go and feels comfortable about going. But the three guys who didn't pit, they're not going to make it to the end of the stage. Not without help. <laughs> Look at these down markers. This is how fast they're moving. Almost a football field a second here at Daytona. Larry Mack, how much has the pace picked up here? Yeah, in the last five laps, it's about three seconds a lap. And by my fuel calculations, the 12, the 20, and the 31, Blaney and, and Hemrick and Bell and Blaney, they can go about another eight, nine laps based on this pace right here. Pretty hard to believe you can hold a pack of, what, 37 cars up behind you, three seconds a lap, Kevin. Well, you just, well, you got to be able to put yourself in a position from a strategy standpoint. And that's one thing that has come into play with this car. There's so much going on behind the scenes with the war rooms and the pit box and the calculations. And it's a complicated game. And it just makes it that much more exciting when you have that early caution and everything happening. Jamie? Well, Austin Sindrick in the two. You guys talked about him being a teammate to the Penske boys. He won this race in 2022. He knows how to get around, knows what to do, and he just heard those words he wanted to hear. You are good on fuel to the end of this stage. Hammer down. Well, that's good for us, too. When they, when they tell them hammer down, that means we're going back to pushing and shoving and trying to get the best position that you can because now we're 27 to go in the stage, and you've got to start positioning yourself to try to win it. They, were, I, like, they were like a bunch of geese. I don't want to go up front and burn more fuel. You want to go up front and burn more fuel? No, I'm going to sit right here. No, I'm going to sit right here. I don't want to be out front. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be out front until finally somebody did. Yeah, they're typical racers. Once somebody went, it's like, well, I got to go. But once that crew chief told me, we're talking about Austin Cindric, told me you're good to go to the end. Now it's all about track position. Now, just like we know about Daytona, find my allies, find my teammates, and get this thing to the front. More importantly, get it to the front with people that I can trust at the end of this so I can go after these stage points. Four Fords out front, then Christopher Bell's Toyota, then Daniel Hemrick's Chevrolet. Uh, three Penske cars and Michael McDowell kind of fulfilling the preseason prophecy of how those Fords have speed and run well together at Daytona. There you saw Cindric move down in his line with his Penske teammates. He saw him wave to Blaney, which let him in right there. Thank you very much, teammate. All right, what's the difference? between seeing your teammate, your real teammate from your team in your mirror versus anybody. Oh, here Tell we go. What? They're going to pit. I wasn't a wave that thing let me in. That was a wave we're pitting. And drag others with them. This should be gas only, like all green flag pit stops today. Christopher Bell going to get filled up. Ryan Blaney is in. Big time heads up play by Bell and company on that 20 car. He, you know he didn't get the, the signal that we're going to pit. He, that was a heads-up play. He saw them. They needed that pit stop, and he went with them. Daniel Hemrick came in with the Penske cars and Christopher Bell. They don't all leave together. Two stragglers, including Hemrick. And up in your upper left, you see the cars leading each of those two groups now that Michael McDowell is the race leader. More stops. Well, one more. As I think that's Busher. It is Chris Busher for RFK by himself. That's I would think that's an untimely unplanned pit stop. Possibly an issue. Twenty four laps to go. That's Josh Berry right in the middle. Got up there kind of close to Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch in the outside in the nine and the eight. Chevrolet trying to lead for the first time today. And it's Chase Elliott rolling to the front for Team Hendrick, but nobody with him. Michael McDowell, the Fords, formed up on the inside to hold the lead. 
Yeah, kind of a confusing cycle here, Mike, with the with the Penske cars coming to pit road with with Ryan Blaney and and some of the well, we obviously knew the three cars that were going to have to pit, but we saw Brad Keselowski come in, we saw Ryan Blaney come in, Joey Logano, so we saw a few Fords and and. I'm not sure. Well, we heard Larry say they could make <laughs> yeah. it to the end, but I think it was those cars we were talking about. Did they go down to help their teammate that they knew needed to pit, or, or was that not the case at all? Maybe a little bit of strategy. We'll try to find out. Chase Elliott comes off turn number four, trying to be the first Chevrolet to lead this year's Daytona 500. Six laps complete, and this game has changed. Chevys are out front in a single file line. Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch, one, two, then the Toyotas above the Wallace and Martin Truex. But the real drama here is with Team Penske, which all pitted together because Joey Logano and uh, Austin Sindrick needed less fuel than Ryan Blaney because they had stopped earlier. Look where they are on the racetrack. And Blaney, who pitted at the same time, had to take more fuel, was stopped for another second and a half. Look Clear where back Blaney there. is. Yeah, he's he's way back here. Way, way back here. Here's Ryan Blaney. Let me know if you need more, please. Yeah, they're pulling away from me. They won't, they won't fan out if they're risking stage points. Okay, thank you. No help will be there later in the race. Yeah, and hopefully they'll explain under caution what exactly happened. You you know these three cars that stayed out. Ryan Blaney was one of them. His teammates were not, and and his teammates were, his teammates were the ones that that had the shorter pit stop, and they couldn't afford to wait from him because Blaine, Ryan Blaney is going to get caught by this pack unless these guys pit. But Joey Logano and Austin Sindrick were able to have a shorter pit stop, and that's what we're going to continually talk about with the pit strategy. And also on the same strategy, Bell and Daniel Hamrick, they're the ones that were even back further than that. They're going to lap down, getting into three. These guys are in trouble without some help. They were stopped under green for 6.9 seconds, two and a half more uh, than Ryan Blaney. So here comes the field to put those two former leaders a lap down. Yeah, and one more thing to clean up there, as, as we talked about on that pit cycle, Chris Buescher, who was, we thought, had a problem pitting by himself, actually wound up in that same Penske group. So there was no pro problem with Chris Buescher. Still 16 laps to the caution flag that will end stage one. You see them getting up, Bell and Henry getting up. You're going to see Blaney. This is going to be a battle to stay on that lead lap and get that lucky dog, Kevin. Now you don't see Michael McDowell who pitted with that Penske group earlier. What happened there, Josh? Yeah, well, an issue for the 34 of Michael McDowell. He just came over the radio having an issue and had to come in and pit early. Take a listen. Everything okay with you? Just situationally got left by everybody? Yeah, I don't know. It kind of seemed a little bit slow. Like the 11 was pushing me hard. I wasn't going anywhere. So I think something's wrong. I can't even get fifth gear. Super slow. Not going at all. Yeah, and it's either there is some something actually wrong or when you're in this pack and we talked about picking up two, three seconds and when your car doesn't have somebody with it and it loses that RPM, it just takes it a little while to build back up. And that could be what Michael's uh, feeling. Now, Ryan Blaney pulled up to McDowell hoping to draft with him, but McDowell doesn't have speed. If there's a saving grace here, one of them will be the first car one lap down, and the next time the caution flags, they'll get the free pass and come back on the lead lap. Spot on. Now we got to go to work, Kevin. we got to get up there, got to catch these other cars, battle for that uh, lead lap lucky dog position. There are five cars one lap down. Bell, Hemrick, Blaney McDowell, and Olmendinger. How's Kyle Busch get to the front? Look at this. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, those boys went all the way to the front leading this pack. Quarter distance, 51 laps complete of the 200 will run today in Daytona. Chase Elliott out front, side by side. 
You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stress is just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, well, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yeah. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. What do we got? Order. A lot of cats. How many cats? I don't know, man. Like 400? What do ladies want to watch? Why are there pool noodles on the goat? One-way alley. One-way alley! You gotta be kidding me! Oh boy, it's a furry party. Can I help you? I certainly hope not. Did you guys late for the mass singer? Ken Jong sucks. The pack is back. The Animal Control season premiere, Wednesday, March 6th on Fox. I, I was standing. You were there. Is this the start of a dynasty? Ryan Blaney is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. A redemption tool. Ready to go to work. Is this the face of a ruthless competitor or a villain? I be your favorite driver. Is it time for a breakthrough? Let's go! To get back to breaking stuff? Hey, or is this the makings of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? It's all of the above, and it's about to go down. Any questions? At the Cracker Barrel, freshly made food at a fair price is just what we do. In fact, we've got over 20 meals under $12, each served with a helping of care. Eat, shop, earn Cracker Barrel rewards. We got mass mania! Y'all ready for this? It's time! Season March 6th on Fox. Feeding time, and this looks like most all of the Chevrolets coming to pit road at lap 55. Well, and this is the hand that Ryan Blaney forced when he took off. It made all these guys not be able to save fuel, and now they're short for this particular stage. So here they are. Not much fuel at all. Quick splash and go. And they'll be pretty strung out as they come off pit road. Bush beats them off the pit road. It's like Eric Jones stalled it, leaving his box. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to have happen. You want to do everything that you need to do to get on and off pit road as clean as possible to get right back in line and up to speed. Now there's that Penske group. 38 seconds behind the leaders, and oh, here's no. another group. Bubba, Bubba Wallace. Wallace, the race leader, locks it up coming to pit road, bringing Martin Truex with him. Denny Hamlin, all the Toyotas in this time. Again, these should be fuel only stops. And Hamlin's the first one away. Now, if there is strength in numbers, it will be in this group forming up quickly in a draft because here come the leaders through the trial. There they are. You see them merging back onto traffic too. Kyle Busch leading. They're going to blow right past them, Kevin. Yeah, and they got formed back up really well. Off of pit road, in a single file line, all Chevrolets right there. Did a better job. They just did a better job. Exactly they were cleaner right. coming on, more efficient coming in. You saw Bubba Wallace slid, stacked that line up a little bit. And that's what you want to do. That's Bubba Wallace. That's exactly what Bubba Wallace wants to see happen. He wants to see those cars have to make a lane change in order to slow them down just a touch. Now that group is Kyle Busch in ninth place on back of the Chevrolets who pitted. Here are the leaders. Noah Gregson from Las Vegas. Todd Gilliland, Josh Berry, Justin Haley. David Reagan, Ryan Priest, Chase Briscoe, Riley Herbst. The Fords are all lined up in positions one through eight. Christopher Bell, first car one lap down, second in line here. See Blaney in tow right there behind him. Well, the things that, that we can't see are exactly 
what they've done throughout this stage since they pitted to save and, and what those strategies are. And, and, but one of the strategies that these guys might be on is that they might want to come to pit road as they want, want to run as long as they can so they can come to pit road the sh most short amount of time that they can come and put fuel in it. So I'll spit that out eventually, but here they are. <laughs> I do agree with you. I know what you were saying, and that's exactly that's, that's what they have to play. Larry? Yeah, we've got seven laps to go in this stage. Now, one thing about the 10 of Gregson, the 60 of Reagan, and the 41 of Priest, they came in and topped off at the end of that caution before we went back racing. Fuel calculations show they can run about six or seven laps, and they're coming right now to six laps to go in this stage. So the leaders, led by Gregson in the number 10, if you look at the map at the top of your screen, he just crosses the line. This group's lap times are not as fast as the group led by Kyle Busch in eighth, the Chevys, or Joey Logano in 22. They are pulling away from the leaders. They're running 50% throttle, though, I'm hearing. They're trying to make it, trying to stretch his fuel as far as possible. Talking about Noah Gregson leading that group. Got three different groups running out here, as you can see in the track map ahead. This is a strategy game right now, Kevin. I'm glad I wasn't a crew chief. <laughs> They're going to pit. Josh Berry coming in for four tires. We expect the others will be fuel only. Gregson and Gilliland, the 10 and 38. The three had been running positions one, two, three here. And Ryan Priest comes in with him. Excuse me, that's not Priest, that's the 51. That's Justin Haley. Well, we see these guys putting four tires on the car, and that's going to put them in a position to have more strategy in the next stage. Haley gets fuel only. The others take on tires. And what I mean by that is when the, when the caution comes out for the stage break, these guys are for sure going to come in and just put fuel in their car. That will hand the lead to the driver who a month ago wasn't even scheduled to run this race, David Reagan. Uh, who is added to Team RFK, Roush Fenway Keselowski, as a teammate to Brad Keselowski and Chris Busher with Ryan Priest right behind. Here's Reagan's radio. I'm just going to leave it on 50% throttle and uh, do it. And just make sure the 41 knows this. Yeah, I copy it. He was just down here talking about it. For 41, they know where we're at. You see him. I'm going to leave it at 50% throttle, and I'm going to the end of this thing. That is what we're going after. How about Priest? He was the one that barely missed that wall, was collected in that wreck, just might end up with a second place out of this stage. This is going to be close. Meanwhile, the question is, will this pack catch him at 50% throttle? Meanwhile, Christopher Bell and Daniel Hemrick, when those leaders pitted, they got back on the lead lap, and so did Ryan Blaney. Michael McDowell is now the first car one lap down. So in the map at the top, you see 60, that is Reagan, the race leader. Kyle Busch in third with a group that is running five seconds faster a lap. All right, Kevin, I listened to you at the top of the show. You told me all the manufacturers, you go in as a driver, you're listening, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to pit at this lap, we're going to do it together. We're going to do it as a manufacturer group. Holy cow, look down this list in the pylon. They're all over the place. Two Fords leading, Chevrolet's a gaggle of them, and then Toyota's behind them. They're all over the place. Yeah, I think that the first two guys are, you know, they're they're going really slow. Obviously, you see that the Chevrolet's eat them up there, but the Chevrolet's and the Toyota's are together as we go through this first two packs here. So it's it's the Chevrolets have done a great job in doing what they need to do on and off pit road. Well, Reagan and Priest, they might make it to the end of the stage, but it won't matter. They've lost the track position and moreover the points that they were going after stage points. But they should be able to stay on the lead lap, which will keep them in the top 30 for stage two. Well, and what's going to happen as we see two to go here? They should they should be able to start racing here and do what they need to do to, to try to get themselves in a position to get stage points. So it's either two to go or one to go. It depends on what the manufacturer has told them what the team plan is to get to that point as to when you can race. That's exactly right. And I see two teammates, Hendrick cars behind them. Look, uh, one in between Daniel Suarez. Then you see Larson there already go. going to the outside with Bowman. Look for Chase Elliott and, and uh, his teammate as well, Byron, to go up. Four Hendrick cars pouncing on your leader, coming. The points earned in each stage 
10 through 1 for the first 10 finishers. They carry with you all through the season. Some of these teams are counting points beginning right now. How about this? Byron moved up to go around him. Bush made a block, separated those Hendrick cars. Now Chase Elliott to the lead. Final lap of the stage. Lap car slow on the bottom. Chase Elliott trying to bring them around and pick up the stage win after a truly disappointing 2023. Kyle Larson, teammate to Chase Elliott. Will he ride with him? Will he try to grab those 10 points well, and the stage ticket for himself? We see Ross Chastain coming to the back bumper. The five see push. Going to see momentum. Watch four. his five going to the outside of Chase Elliott. That's what it took. Now Big Chastain by Chase. I think the win Elliott. goes to Chase Elliott. Fantastic. Stage. Chase Elliott gets his second stage win in the Daytona 500. Six Chevrolets in a row come to the green and white checkered flag. Stage one is history. Elliott the winner. So the stage ends with six Chevrolets out front. The Fords of Reagan and Reagan and Priest completed the stage and then immediately dove to pit road. So they'll have to start out back, but they are on the lead lap. And the first car one lap down, A.J. Allmendinger gets the free pass. He'll be back on the lead lap. Well, as they come to pit road, sounds like a great time for Daytona 500 Fox. Crank it up. Kyle Larson wins the race off pit road. John Hunter Nemechek's car has lost fire. They tried pushing him out of the pit. He is now stopped. And uh, Tyler Reddick had trouble getting going. Finally, he, uh, Reddick, grabs a gear and gets gone while Nemechek's car is sitting motionless on pit road. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Bush Light. Race for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. 68 laps complete. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek did get his car refired. Turned out he had run out of gas, was trying to restart it sitting there on pit road. He did. He rejoined the field. Let's recap pit stops beginning with Josh. Start with the 48 of Alex Bowman for him. The first time in seven years he did not start on the front row. Still happy with the way the car entered the race, but right now he was complaining about rear security, so they helped him out, also gave him four tires and fuel. Regan? Chase Elliott in the nine car has been pleased all day long. Not a word about how the car is handling or what's going on. Just a, him quiet on the radio, learning to work with brand new spotter Trey Poole, who is on the roof. The first different spotter Chase has had through his cup career. Also, the 45 of Tyler Reddick stalled on pit road as well. The reason for his him stalling was actually came in at too much of an angle into the pit box. Didn't want to gas it up too hard with fear. The back would swing over and hit the wall. Jamie? Well, Regan, today is the 40th anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports' first Daytona 500. The whole team knows it, and they want this win. And how about that? All four of their cars finished that stage in the top five. As far as Kyle Larson, he is so happy with this race car. They didn't make any adjustments there, just four tires. But he's been happy all week long. So keep your eye on Kyle Larson, guys. Thanks, Jamie. Number of cars coming in to top off uh, and penalties. Kyle Busch had a safety violation on his stop. You're only allowed five men over the wall, and a man behind the wall fell over the wall trying to catch a tire, so he'll restart out back. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek's team was over the wall too soon. 
I agree with you, Jamie. Keep an eye on Kyle Busch. Needed that track position. Didn't work out with Blaney so much and all those guys that were back there with him. But he's a guy in a backup car. Started at the back. Now we're reestablished. We're back on stage two here. And Kyle Busch is at the front. Can't take it away from these Hendrick cars, though. They've been strong. They've been kind of quiet strong, Kevin. We've been keeping an eye on that five car. But, boy, are they at the front. Well, we saw them work together there at the at the end of that stage. And, and we've said for a couple days that Kyle Larson's been a great pusher, so it's no surprise that he's up there. The new Toyota Camry XSE leading the field here at Daytona. Stage one complete. We roll into stage two. And we will restart with 34 cars on the lead lap. Here are the points earned in stage number one. Chase Elliott getting the stage win. Jimmy Johnson two laps down, long pit stop with the hood up. He's rolling back out now. Michael McDowell three laps down after repairs. And Austin Dillon uh, with mechanical issues went to the garage, came back 53 laps down. <sighs> We're well, seeing your car up front, Hot Rod. Look at that. Josh it is a Berry. Bit weird. <laughs> front row with Kyle Larson. Big crowd on hand for the 500 and the 300 mile Xfinity race that will follow tonight. Back under green, stage two. Josh Berry spotter, Eddie DeHunt. 16 spotter changes for 2024. A lot of movement there. Uh, Eddie DeHunt from Chase Elliott to Josh Berry. Yeah, Eddie DeHunt has a lot of experience with uh, being on Chase Elliott's radio for a number of years and now on Josh Berry's radio. The reason Josh Berry is up in the front is because of that four tire pit stop that they made under green. They only had to do fuel under caution and now they are up in the front of the pack. Same for Todd Gillen in that red and black 38. Second car back on the outside. Same strategy as Barry. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on Todd Gillen there. He, he is just, uh, as we ride on board with Denny Hamlin, Todd, Todd Gillen's on the outside uh, in the 38 car right there. Always does a great job, I think, um, on these su super speedways and finding something that, that makes it happen to get to the front. And here comes that third line, Clint. Huge run on the outside, three wide. I was trying to get it out of you. How about Joey Logano off the bumper of Chase Briscoe in that 14 car? We are going to the front and doing it in a hurry. And right with them is the 51 of Justin Haley, who uh, finished 10th in the clash. That's the 51. Haley said, that gave us a lot of hope coming to Daytona. Hey, we beat teams that have more employees and more square footage in their gift shop than we have in our race shop. And he's another one that's done a great job on the super speedways has won here at Daytona in the in the Cup Series before and always seems to find his way to the front uh, right behind Joey Logano right now. Like seeing that Joey Logano we heard you talking about Eddie DeHaan and the, the, uh, the chemistry between these drivers and their spotters. Listen to that guy telling you where, how far is he back moving back feeling the energy. All right. Here comes Briscoe on the inside staying in line with them. Nothing like that. Being uh, that feeling of being up front and watching in the rearview mirror, those lines form behind you. So Haley, who has a July race win at Daytona in the 51, for Rick Ware, and down on the bottom, Chase Briscoe in the 14, who is now the senior tenured driver at Stuart Haas. Well, he almost needed a tow truck right there because Josh Berry was all over that back bumper and they got really swirly on the inside line and broke that line up. A lot of energy in the outside two lanes here. Still bid three, one out front. Let it jump in middle with you. Still one out front. Now half out front. That's Drew Herring, Martin Truex's sponsor, the number 19. Yeah, and that mistake by 
Josh Berry and Chase Briscoe on the bottom has just completely demolished the, the bottom line. You see those guys slip all the way almost to the back of this of this whole pack here and, it, and really taking three lines down to two and then one line up in the front. Yeah, all that energy moved to the outside, shuffled them to the back, away they go. He's trying to establish again, Denny pushing Byron, see if they can get this bottom going back to the front, pointed in the right direction. Chris Busher has joined the party. Now three Fords out front of Kyle Busch's Chevrolet. Yeah, and here's that replay of Josh Berry on the bottom and, and those guys just a little bit off center. And then Josh tried to chase his bumper down there and it was too late at that particular point. Look how far it stacked him up behind him. You saw everybody's flames start blowing out of their exhaust. That is everybody lifting, seeing trouble ahead. That was a heads up by uh, move by not only the drivers, but those spotters telling them, checking up, checking up front. And it just changed the whole dynamic of the whole, the whole pack by just the ebb and flow of, of the way these lines move. Late afternoon in Daytona Beach. Sun in your rear view mirror down the back stretch. Sun in your face entering turn one. Joey Logano in front of Justin Haley and Chris Buescher. Today is just such a special day. The XFL and the USFL merge together to create one powerful spring football league called the UFL. These players are going to play hard-nosed, intense football, passionate football. Every play matters. Touchdown! They got one shot. They're going to ball out. What incredible! Spring football is here to stay. The UFL season kicks off March 30th on Fox and ABC. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. 79 laps complete. Logano, Haley, Busher, the three Fords out front. What a coolie made of Ross Chastain's Daytona 500 tires to keep your Bush Light cold and smooth. You could win one or one of the other 500 prizes Bush Light is giving away. Enter every lap that ends in a one on X using hashtag Bushtona 500, hashtag sweepstakes. There's Ross in 29th. One big pack and way in the back of it, having dropped to the back, Denny Hamlin. You see him to the back, but let me tell you, who is a benefactor of that? Talked about Kyle Busch having that trouble on pit road penalty. He's back to the front. Logano took that thing up. Busch moved and Priest, by the way. He had to pit at the end. 25 spots Kyle Busch gained, 23 on Priest. Huge gains by them passing the whole field on the outside with Logano towing that line. Regan. Well, Mike Clint just mentioned Brian Priest and how good he's doing right now. Keep in mind, early in the race, they had to pit early for damage to repair that race car on the very first yellow of the race. They did a nice job of getting it repaired. And Ryan Priest, if you're looking for somebody to pull for, maybe one of the most blue collar drivers in the field. If he's not in the race car, he is in a race shop working on a car. He loves to work on race cars. Jamie. Year. They have a new body. Same for the Ford Dark Horse Mustang. And there were a lot of questions how they would run in the draft, how they would feel. Well, Truex, very happy with it. More stability in his race car. He can push better. He can be pushed better. He's running in the top 10 right now. Martin Truex Jr., one of those guys that's never gotten the job done here at Daytona or any super speedway track, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. There he is behind Todd Gilliland in the 38 and Bubba Wallace. In the 23 behind that Ford, three Toyotas in line. Well, you see Bubba Wallace down there on the bottom pushing the 38 of Todd Gill, and and what they need is is the third place car, Martin Truex Jr., to stay as close as possible. Bubba gave uh, Todd a huge huge push down the back straightaway, and you see the flames come out of Martin Truex's pipes, and that's what you don't want at the end of the straightaway. You want to do that as close as you can to the exit of the corner, so you get the whole straightaway to to push them down. So they, those guys on the bottom have to work on their gaps a little bit, but that becomes difficult because of the, the amount of cars that are on the inside line. There's just not that many. I'm glad you said that, Kevin, and I think that was a perfect example of how those lines work. I always try to explain this as a chain. When all the links are tight, the chain works. When, as soon as you get a, a slack in the chain, it's just uh, like a slinky, and the overall performance of that line goes downhill. 
Yeah, and you see those guys as they go through the corners, they go up the racetrack to try to side draft and slow that outside line down. So uh, you'll notice that going in, into one and two here, that inside lane will probably go up the racetrack if, well, they didn't get as good a push that time, but they've been going up the racetrack to try to slow that, that outside lane down. So you see them up there again, and that's why they're not on the yellow line. They want to stay up as far as possible to try to shove that air on the spoilers of the guys in the outside lane. Also creates that slack in the chain, if you will, that I'm talking about in the accordions, that line. When they go up and pull that side drop off, they get slowed down, and then they get a push. It pushes them back up. You can't get any continuity with your line. The next stage break comes at lap 130. Larry, too soon to be thinking about fuel mileage in this second stage. Mike, you read my mind. We went back racing at lap 70, which means if they want to run it long, which I think most people will unless they decide to come a little earlier, they'll go to about lap 110 to lap 115. That's somewhere around 15 to 20 to go in this stage. Well, when that stage ends, Stay tuned for an epic dude perfect race made possible by the all new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Bubba Wallace is doing a just a fantastic job on that bottom lane keeping Todd Gill and going forward. This is that strength that we saw in the duels with the Toyotas and in practice afterwards Kevin we saw them being able to push a harder than most other brands uh, and that's exactly what you see with Bubba Wallace being able to do that see those hood flaps pushing when those things fly up just like Larry told us at the top of the show that means that baby's pushing hard. Twenty one of sixty five complete in stage two of the sixty fifth Daytona five hundred a little gyro cam action. The Daytona five hundred on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance bundle auto and home and save. And by Toyota let's go places. 88 laps complete as we close in on halfway. There's Joey Logano leading from the Goodyear blimp. Goodyear powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear more driven. I'm seeing Bubba. I think he's wanting down in front of Gill, and I look if this bottom lane comes up, see if he takes that bottom line and see if he can pull it to the lead. Well, Joey Logano has commanded this second stage. The pole winner for the Daytona 500, the fastest qualifier, has not won the race since Dale Jarrett did it when Joey Logano was nine years old. He's gonna 2000. Stay, he's gonna stay in line there. Thanks for Huge making a show goal. by Truex, pushing Gillen way up. But there's that slack in the chain. Watch. He'll now he'll have to lift, catch back up, big shot, slows the lane down, backs him up, start the mo uh, motion all over again. Yeah, and the problem is. They just they don't have the timing down for the third place car to keep that line moving forward. You see Bubba uh, fall back from from Justin Haley in the 51 car there. And it just slows that line down when they create those big gaps and pulls we, them backwards. You saw when Bubba moved up to that outside how he drove off. I think if they can get. But this is how you want to do it Clint. You see how Martin connected right off the corner. Oh I see it but I think they're wanting his Gilland out of the way. If they can get Gilland out of the way and line up these Toyotas on the bottom. I, I, I hate to say it. I think they're going to go to the front and be strong. We know these Toyotas are fast. We've seen it all week long. Well they're maintaining down there and there's only six cars. They just can't get them lined up. Joey Logano's pole run the other night was the first pole for Roger Penske in the Daytona 500. He's been competing here since the 70s, but look at what Team Penske has done since last May when they won the Indy 500 and the Coke 600 and the NASCAR Cup Championship for Chevy and Ford and then for Porsche won the Rolex 24 hours here a couple of weeks ago at Daytona and then Logano's Ford gives the captain his first ever Daytona 500 pole. Michael McDowell with electrical troubles uh, has now gone four and about to be five laps down. The outside pole sitter.
NASCAR is going back to Chicago. A 4th of July festival, music, entertainment, and racing throughout Grant Park. Uh, headlined by Keith Urban, Chain Smokers, The Black Keys, and Lauren Elena, July 6 and 7. For tickets and experiences, visit NASCARChicago.com. Well, we see Todd Gillen slid up in front of the other two Fords. Uh, first, uh, the second one of Joey Logano there, but now Todd Gillen is the leader on that outside line and left only five cars in the bottom. Well, I think that's what Truex wanted. He's got his a teammate, an ally, if you will, and Reddick behind him. Let's see if those two Toyotas can do good. But Logano pushing on that Gillen on the outside is going to help that line big time. Thirty four cars on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson the seven time champion now three laps down Josh. Well the day started with so much promise for the 84 of Jimmy Johnson after racing his way into the Daytona 500. Unfortunately involved in that wreck early in the race so after that last pit stop he started complaining about a steering issue after coming out just not able to catch up to the draft. The most important thing for Jimmy now is a part owner of Legacy Motor Club. He told me earlier it's just about getting data about being out there so that he can relay whatever information he's able to pick on to hopes that it can uplift the team and get them where they need to be guys. Well you can see a steering wheel right there the markers on the top that should be clear over to the left side indicating wheel straight up on your pits that wheels way off a lot of toe damage on the front of that car. Johnson carrying the Creed Tour on board camera today. Boy, Martin Truex just can't get that low line up to the front can he. Well there's just not as much surge. You, you, you've got that second place car and the third place car but there's just not as much inner energy and behind those fourth and fifth place cars like there is in that outside line to rebound. And just as I say that there we go. Yeah I mean you're going to see him cycle up there. Well we see we see somebody else drop down out of the pack. So what you're seeing is a good old fashioned drag race by two manufacturers. Got them Toyotas lined up on the inside the dark horse Mustangs on the outside. I like it. I dig it. Almost halfway in stage number two of the Daytona 500. Martin Truex Jr. now out front. The 98 laps complete in Daytona. Join Kevin Harvick every Tuesday and Thursday as he gives his opinion on top NASCAR storylines and brings big names in sports and entertainment to the racing world on Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour podcast presented by NASCAR on Fox. And Mike, I've got more to announce on it. We, we have a sponsor for our show with Samsung Galaxy joining us as our presenting sponsor. So that's going to be a lot of fun to talk about everything that we've had uh, happen on the weekend, everything leading into the next week, and maybe do some cool interviews. So I'm looking forward to that with Caitlin Vinci and Mama Smith. Try your hat on for size, boys. We got our first sponsor. That's right. <laughs> Before we ever even have a show, that's not bad, Kevin. Not bad now, at all. Joey Logano's 22 has been the strongest board all day, but the dynamic has changed once Todd Gilliland pulled up to the outside lane in front of Logano. Best movies to be next to each other. Got to go back to the bottom. What's he doing? We had control. I don't know if you have a chat down there, but all I got is I'm not driving. On it. Yeah, and the chat that he's talking about is how the manufacturers and all the crew chiefs communicate with each other on the pit box and, and everywhere else that they're sitting. So uh, he, Joey's talking about Todd Gill, and he was in the bottom lane, and he felt like they could control how much fuel they were saving at, at a particular time by controlling the speed of the two lanes. And now Martin Truex Jr. is the leader of the bottom lane. But, you know, I think... Uh, in Joey's case it should be easier for him to to save fuel where he's at but he's just under the control of Todd Gillen so he, he just likes control of the race and he likes the view at the front of the line. And Todd Gillen has been around racing his entire life his grandfather Butch was West Coast champ and his dad David led 18 laps in the 2007 Daytona 500 that Kevin Harvick won. Regan. Well, Mike, just to add to what Kevin was saying about Todd Gillen moving up to the top, part of the problem for Todd Gillen was they were worried they were going to get shucked out by the Toyotas and put three wide. They didn't want that to happen to lose the track position, so they wanted to get up thinking that that would be the better place for them to be on the racetrack. And what a job he is doing right now leading the Daytona 500. The team told me earlier they expect him to be a difference maker this year. I'd say that's a good way to start. 
and he has to protect himself and that's what they thought they needed to do to not wind up at the back of the pack so they did what they thought was right for them as a team to put themselves in a position and one thing about Todd Gillen is every time I'm around him and we talk about stuff like that I feel old because I raced against Todd his dad and his grandpa <laughs> all right three generations three generations <laughs> well that does make you old. Uh, thanks Clint Jamie <laughs> Well, talking about Martin Truex Jr. coming up on the inside there, I talked to his spotter this morning, Drew Herring, and he said this is a very unique place. Usually spotters will stand wherever they want, right up there on top of these racetracks on, on the roof. He said here, because we have to communicate so quickly, we need to stand next to our teammates. So they're organized by team and by organization. So quicker communication is what it's all about. 20 years of trying for Martin Truex to win the Daytona 500 in 2016. He finished second by inches in the closest ever finish here. That's the thing, you know, I hear you 20 years of trying, but you got to listen to the second part of that equation. He lost this race by mere inches. I mean, heartbreaker close. He can get the job done, and I think he's got the hot rod to get the job done this time. There's the view from his Bass Pro Shops camera today. He is one of six active NASCAR Cup championships still trying to win their first Daytona 500. That's a pretty stout list of uh, of cup champs there that, that haven't won this race. We don't know what's going to happen as, as we cycle through this race, but um, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if one of them won. It I'm ready. Surprise me if they didn't. Well, I'm ready. We've had three straight years of outlier winners, drivers who had never won before, haven't won since and have trouble finishing in the top 30 in points. I think I'm ready for a driver with a championship in his pocket to go to victory lane today. You can be ready all you want. This whole <laughs> racetrack at Daytona ain't ready. There ain't nobody getting it. I think this place decides who wins. It's a hard one to get done. 20 years we watched Earnhardt drive finally get it done. It's such a special race. And, and when you talk about how hard that it is to win here because of the fact that Everybody knows that they have an opportunity to have three months to work on their car and do everything that they need to do. They bring their best prepared car all year. And for a lot of the smaller teams that have those upset wins, they are able to, to put a car on a racetrack that can compete, and they know it. Still two by two. Truex's Toyota Gilliland's Ford. Just past halfway at the Daytona 500 on Fox. The sun setting in Daytona as they come off turn four to complete 108 of 200 laps. Todd Gilliland and Joey Logano now have gone to the bottom. Bubba Wallace up to the outside to take the lead in this Daytona 500. Toyota, Chevy, and then five Fords. Now pit stops will be coming up soon. Josh? Yeah, and one of those drivers that's going to come in for a pit stop very soon is Josh Berry in the four. And as Kevin knows, up in the booth, this is a new era for that team. And then crew chief Rodney Childers told me that they worked in the offseason doing some late model races together just to establish a relationship so they weren't starting at ground zero when the season started. He said that was super important for them so they felt comfortable heading into the season and had better communication streamlined. Regan? Well, Josh, what a great run back to the front yet again today for Kyle Busch as he leads this race right now up 28 positions since the restart. A little surprising, too, because Kyle does not love that race car as of right now. Said it shoves the nose when he turns the turns the wheel too much, meaning it's tight. It wants to go up the racetrack, but you wouldn't notice that based on him up front. Mike? Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, Ryan Priest up in front of Todd Gilliland, Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano. A lot of jostling side to side. Whoa. A lot of hands out right there. Ryan Priest, he's wanting down. I think they're wanting to pit. He's trying to get down. Got his hand out the window. Bubba Wallace, no can do. Well, we saw the 38, the 22, and the 23 of Bubba Wallace and eight of Kyle Busch. Everybody worked themselves down a couple laps ago anticipating coming to pit road. Not no this last time. Well, and that's the reason I make that point is because Ryan Blaney and, and Ryan Priest in the 41 and the 12 in the outside lane, there's really nowhere for them to go right now unless somebody makes a hole. And they know it's coming up, so they got to get themselves in position without losing a bunch of spots, if possible. And that's where trouble strikes. We've seen it time and time again. They try to get down anyway, cross pass, and get spun out. 
getting on the pit road. Very tricky, very tight quarters. And the further that this goes and the closer that it gets, that gets harder and harder to do. All right, Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace with a handout. And Priest drops in on the bottom and takes the lead, the Berlin, Connecticut, former modified champ. Here they come. And here he comes. Going to drag a big pack with him. This will be half the field. Down to pit road speed at the yellow line. Twenty cars come in and around goes one of them as John Hunter Nemechek tried to force the issue on Josh Berry. Josh Berry needed to get down. Hunter was already there. It turned him right around. That's OK. They'll fuel it facing the other way. As long as he's in his pit box, it's a legal stop. Well, we always talk about how everything is so planned and you want this to be structured and organized. And the next thing you know, you come on the pit road, there's cars crossing over each other's paths trying to get to pit road and we have wrecks. Another pack will come this time, perhaps. Ryan Priest, too fast entering pit road. He came in as the leader, couldn't get it slowed down quick enough. He'll have to do a drive through penalty at pit road speed. We listened in on Ryan Blaney. Gotta get down. One car coming this time. That'll be Priest to serve his penalty. Well, and sometimes waiting a little bit longer to pit allows you to just keep maintaining running good lap times. Uh, we see this back group that, that has already pitted. We heard Ryan Blaney frustrated because, like I said earlier, the more laps that go by, the more frustration and, and uh, urgency to get down. Anthony Alfredo comes in to make his stop by himself. Flip side of that is it's really not a manufactured pit stop here. That was literally half the field came in, half the field stayed out. I think Ryan Blaney's just fine where he's at. Well, and sometimes you just say, the heck with it. I'm coming with everybody else because they're all coming in and you just have to make that call as a driver sometimes. I watched you do that last year, Kevin. Everybody was having trouble coming on. He said, you know what? I'm going to go with a smaller group this time. Yeah, sometimes you just have to explain it on Monday morning. <laughs> so on the Tuesday. map at the top, that's car number eight, Kyle Busch, with that group of cars leading the race and some of them coming to pit road. The group of cars led by the 22, mostly Fords, that were first to stop. Things a little more orderly here, as they can be, yeah, when you only have eight cars coming in at a one little time. bit of a smaller group. So it allows those guys to be a little more orderly because there's more room to move around. All of these are fuel only. And that pack will pretty much leave as a group with the exception of Zane Smith's car. Now Kyle Larson is the race leader with Blaney, Elliott, and remember when we did the starting grid and I said, who's your sleeper pick? How about Corey LaJoy? There he is with that group in the seven. And here that group comes down pit road. Eight cars to take fuel under green. Mostly Chevy's, but for uh, Austin Sindrick and Ryan Blaine in Fords. Kevin, these green flag pit stops are all about efficiencies. Coming on pit road, coming off the of pit road together. Who can do it best? Well, we saw the, the first two groups merge, and the third group is going to merge right in the middle of turns one and two as the lead pack of what is the eight car of, yep, of Kyle, Kyle Busch coming down to these guys. And as we go to the back stretch here, it's going to be interesting. I just saw a team teammate right there. You saw Logano coming up on the outside. That three car, Ozzy Dillon pulled up and made a block. Kyle Busch is in the lead of that thing. Three car, several laps down, pulled up and made a block. That's teamwork right there. 
Well, this is what you want. There you go. Austin Cindric pull up. That's his job. His job is to pull up and try to disrupt that line as much as possible to slow everything down. Joey Logano is coming behind Austin Cindric. He gets behind his teammate. Kyle Busch is all messed up because William Byron is up the racetrack and they have slowed the whole pack down. And now they're right in the middle of it towards the front. That all started with Austin Dillon moving up and making that block on Logano. Collected all of those. They were going to blow by all of them on the outside. So now the eight, Kyle Busch looks to the high side. Trying to catch the race leader, who is Kyle Larson, with his Hendrick teammate Chase Elliott in tow. That's like saying, "Hey, we're going to go down the we're going to go down the highway," and and it's that guy that's sitting in the in the slow lane like Boyer. He's just sitting there. Well, that's what you're supposed to do: pull over, screw everything up as much as you can, and and they wound up they wound up blocking him really really well. But I know that seems like a strange strategy to pull up into a high speed car that's going way faster than you. It's not strange. It's a bold strategy. But everything's back under control now. I think all is well. Kyle Larson was 19th prior to the green flag pit stop cycle. He comes out with the lead. I can lock on my door. Is this the start of a dynasty? Ryan Blaney is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. A redemption tour. Ready to go to work. Is this the face of a ruthless competitor or a villain? I be your favorite driver. Is it time for a breakthrough? Let's go! To get back to breaking stuff? Hey, or is this the makings of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? Let's go! It's all of the above, and it's about to go down. Any questions? 80 laps to go in Daytona. Spring football just around the corner and it hits a whole new level when the USFL and XFL come together to unleash the United Football League. March 30th on Fox and this spring on ABC ESPN FS1 and Fox. Dwayne The Rock Johnson a big part of the UFL. The Stallions take on the Renegades. The two former league champions will come together in the opener. Well, no matter who blocked two or what the time was getting on or off pit road, we got a pack. And these guys are pushing and shoving and doing, they're way more aggressive than they have been earlier in the race. Kyle Busch leading the top, Austin Sindrick leading the bottom. Uh, Kyle Larson was leading a third lane on the bottom further back, dropped in line. I'm glad you said that, Mike. That bottom line, that's two for two. It does not prevail. As soon as they get stacked up on the outside, those outside lines blow the doors off. Well, typically you don't want somebody on your on your right rear because the air just slows you down from the other cars as it bounces off that spoiler. Kyle Busch has been in 19 Daytona 500s. This is his 20th try. He spent the 2015 Daytona 500 in a hospital bed after a crash in the Saturday race. In 2023, at the end of 500 miles, Kyle Busch was the race leader. But we went into overtime, and it was not to be. He takes Richard Childers back to victory lane to Daytona. I don't know if this play's ready for a party like that, Kevin. Well, there's not many people in that infield that know the importance and experience as many things as Richard Childers has at this particular racetrack and in, race, in NASCAR racing in general. Kyle Busch has now led 337 laps in the 500, more than any other driver who has not been to victory lane. We had him on the pre-race yesterday, and you can oh wow, big hit by William Byron. That hit big came all the way from Almondinger in the 16. A lot of energy behind him, but you could just feel it, Kevin, when he was talking to us. The sense of urgency for Kyle Busch in winning this race, it's very, very apparent. I interviewed Kyle Busch uh, leading into the Daytona 500 and sat down with him, and I couldn't believe how relaxed. Maybe he was just trying to be nice because he knew it was my first interview, but he was so close to winning the Daytona 500. He's won everything else in the sport. Uh, you know, I think having a year under his belt at, at Richard Childress Racing and knowing how that whole operation works, I think he understands the significance of him wanting to win the race, but he understands the significance and what it means to Richard Childress Racing uh, to, to come down here and just as a privilege to race in general, Richard makes it very aware that we are going to put as much effort as possible into winning Daytona. Austin Sendrick, who won this race two years ago, Ryan Blaney with him. 
Cindric's dad, Tim, general manager at Team Penske, going into the Indy Hall of Fame this year for uh, everything he's done at the Brickyard. Jamie. Austin Sindrick, just 25 years old, won this race in his first attempt at it two years ago. He studies more than any other driver I have ever seen, especially when it comes to this style of racing. And it's showing right here, running up front. And Mike, last year was a year he wants to forget. One top five. Can you imagine if he could pull it off and win this first race of the year? What a shot in the arm for this team. One thing I've noticed here, Clinton, I'll draw this out uh, as we go through the corner right here. But as we enter turn one with this pack, the space between these two cars it has become a lot closer. The space on the bottom of this racetrack, there's a lot of track down there on the bottom. <laughs> and those guys know that that side draft is, is keeping those guys slowed down up top. And a tough break for Justin Haley. He is pitting by himself with fuel pressure problems. The 51's had a great run here at Daytona today. Spent a lot of laps in the top three, but uh, he is out of fuel and coasts into his pit stall. You know, He'll go at least a lap down. Last three or four years we've been down here to Daytona. We've been to Talladega. We've watched this package, right? The Super Speedway package, Kevin. Ford has had a dominant car when it talks when we talk about super speedways with them having a new body Toyota having a new body I think Ford adjusted a little bit for the mile and a half some of the downforce packages it is really even this pack up when we talk about Daytona all three manufacturers very even who just dropped to the bottom Christopher Bell made a third lane on the bottom and he's got some help watch that yellow Camry trying to get to the front four to go it's time with uh, Ricky Stenhouse last year's 500 winner right with him. Well, they're going to need more cars down there, and the, and the problem is they're going to catch these these cars that are a little bit slower coming up to them, and that's usually when it creates problems, especially if they're three wide. But those three cars in a the line, they've got a lot of energy already built up, momentum. I think that's a, a decent move by Bell. He saw that coming. Here comes an opportunity. Let's use that air off those cars, see if we can get to the front, maybe move up before we catch them. They're well, going to catch Ty Gibbs, Josh Berry, and Ryan Priest here. Yeah, the problem is if they do catch them, though, I just I don't know that they're going to go anywhere. And, and now you see the cars behind Ricky Stenhouse get up into that second lane because they're anticipating those guys uh, being in the way and not being able to go far wide. And that's going to take Christopher Bell and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. back. There's just nowhere to go. Went for it. He yeah. didn't have the track position into the, the stage. I like it. Got to try. You see, I think you saw Larson right there dip down. He's going. He is Kyle Larson on the bottom by himself. Coming to two to go in stage two. Lapped cars well to the inside. Or about to be lapped cars. Those teammates are holding strong in that middle. Big shot by Blaney. Giving Cindric a shove. Byron on that outside, pushing Bush. Those three cars just getting lapped all had some pit road issues. But Barry getting turned around. And that's why they're now going a lap down. Gosh, I just this this side by side uh, with that that second the bottom lane moving so close to the outside lane. They've obviously in, they're obviously in a position where they feel like it's helping them keep up and keep the momentum. But it, 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 it keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter and it's going to cause a problem at some point. And that point is off the corner. When you get tight, you lose the nose off that car in front of you. There's no room for air. You're going to be up in the side of that car. I've seen it time and time again here on the exit of the corners. Daniel Suarez, the freeway insurance cam. Uh, coming up into play here. He is fifth as they have half a lap to go to complete stage two. Well, you, you see Daniel Suarez right here with this throttle percentage. What he's doing right there is is checking up so he doesn't run into the back of the car in front of him. And that's the kind of momentum that they have right now able to just run up there and ram that car if he didn't let off the throttle. Battle for the stage win battle to be the first car one lap down and get the free pass that's priest versus Gibbs as Cindric takes him into turn three. Blaney to the bottom he said he wasn't going to help his teammates he didn't he dropped to the bottom to try to win stage two great move by Cindric to move up before Bush got to his outside and get caught in the middle that was a heads up move by Cindric champion Ryan Blaney win stage two from Austin Cindric Daniel Suarez. Kyle Busch and Tyler Reddick. It is Blaney's third stage win in the Daytona 500. So buckle up and stay right here as it's time for a one of a kind dude perfect battle on the racetrack featuring epic footage captured on the all new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. 
I'm TT. I'm Sparky. And it is a foggy day here at Texas Motor Speedway, which is a great day for racing. Today's battle is made possible by the all-new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra featuring Galaxy AI. Each competitor has the new device mounted to the front of their cart so we can capture their point of view and their facial reactions. Kind of a nifty little feature. Dual recording, some would say. That's what it's called. Let's get to racing. Good luck, boys. Three, two, one, race! Jones immediately bottle rockets. He bottle rockets and it helps him out and he gets the lead early on headed into the first turn. Headed into the slippery corner. Will he prevail? Oh, no, Cody spins out. Now that was a nasty wipeout time. Hey, let's take a look at that replay in slow motion from the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And it looks like Gare makes a move. Will he use turbo boosters on this straightaway? Oh, he does. Whoa. Wow! Here comes the speed bumps. These things oh have been known to absolutely wreck a vehicle. Yeah! Here comes the board games. Yeah, baby! A late rocket boost! Oh, and Cody makes a move. A late move. He runs into a box. Oh, it's going to be a photo finish time. Ah! Oh, and he's got his... Oh, and it looks like that. He's in the lead. Can he finish it? Wow! Congratulations, Garrett Thank Hilbert. You. What Thank a race. Yes. What a finish. By the way, were those board games on the corners it, over there? I think they were board games. Let's use Circle to Search with Google to find out. Say I want to know more. All I got to do, long press the home button. Little oh, circle. Oh, that's yeah. sweet, dude. Perfect board game. How about that? That is That's sick. cool. More impressive than Garrett's win. Huge thanks again to Galaxy AI on the all-new S24 Ultra from Samsung for making this epic race happen. <laughs> Nightfall in Daytona at the end of stage two. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. We're at the end of stage two, and Bush Light is still giving away prizes. Enter for a chance to win a getaway to North Carolina for a Trackhouse Motorplex racing experience and other big prizes during every lap that ends in a one. Follow at Bush Beer on X to learn more. So you can drive, you can drive, Clint? Like you can enter the contest and win the go-kart race? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, okay. Well, a couple of real close ones at the end of stage two. First was uh, the Austin Sindrick block and, Ryan, and the Ryan Blaney move for the lead also was the finish for first car on the lead lap at the end of the stage and that is scored as Ty Gibbs over Ryan Priest and Josh Berry. Uh, so Gibbs will get the free pass the Blaney, right here. There's the Monster Energy camp. Blaney moved to the lead to take that stage win. I saw that coming but I really thought Cindric was in trouble was going to get stuck in the middle there. Quick move up was a heads up move very very close block but it saved his day to get some stage points. Well, like you said, we heard Ryan, Ryan Blaney frustrated earlier in the in the run there and, and saying he was not going to hang with his teammates. Well, he definitely didn't hang with his teammate. He went and took that momentum and went right by him. Also true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the end of stage two. There are no more planned caution flags for the rest of the race, and we've had only three of them. The incident at lap six for John Hunter Nemechek Got into the side of Harrison Burton, knocking Burton and Carson Hosevar and Kaz Gralla out of the race. Uh, it also sent Austin Dillon to the garage for repairs and damaged the car of Jimmy Johnson. The only other caution flags have been for the stage breaks. Means the Buddy Baker's all time Daytona 500 record average speed of 177 miles an hour is in no jeopardy today. All right, the lead lap cars head for pit road. Let's begin with Josh. 
We'll begin with the 99 of Daniel Suarez. Quietly found his way into the top five. His biggest complaint needs more rear security. They're going to go four tires and a dot of fuel here. Regan? Kyle Busch in the eight car complaining about tight earlier, but the sun has gone down and that has helped him. That car's gotten better for him. A little bit too dirty in a straight line, meaning it moves around just a little bit too much for him. The 12 of Ryan Blaney, he's a little tight right now as the track continues to change. Jamie? Austin Sindrick in the two led 10 laps there says he needs nothing inside the race car. He's happy. Four tires waited on fuel. This could be the last time they take tires today. Cedric Blaney Suarez coming off pit road. Ryan Blaney defending series champ and stage two winner in the Daytona 500. You're looking at Kyle Busch trying to limp onto pit road without losing his left front wheel which has no retaining nut attached. Let's show you the pit stop and what led to this. He seemed no waved his hands stop 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 unfortunately did not get that lug nut on. Yeah no. that's a tough no. spot. That's a tough spot for the jack man because he's thinking fast 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 but his responsibility is to make sure that both those wheel nuts are on. But damage control they got right on the radio to Kyle told him watch your speed stay down stay on the apron keep that left front on at all cost to get back around here to pit road and get it replaced. Which is a great job yeah. by Kyle Busch to drive that thing around two and a half miles and keep that left front tire somehow, some way back on that vehicle. So for the driver, when, when uh, Josh Sobecki drops the jack, is that his signal to go? 100%. When that jack drops, you're dropping the clutch and flooring it and, and doing everything you can do to get out of the pit stall. So that responsibility is definitely on the, on the jack guy when he drops the jack. And, and there's really, Kyle's looking in his mirror and he's got all kinds of things going on trying to make sure he doesn't hit anybody coming out of this pit box. But unfortunately, that jack guy was looking at that left rear. He wasn't looking at the left front. All right, fellas, assume the position. It's time for the Credit One Bank ones to watch. Uh, Clint. Clint, over here, Clint. Which manufacturer are you watching? Which manufacturer? All of them. I just said before we went to break, man, all three of them are dead even. But if I had to pick one right now, I like what I see with Logano. I saw Hendricks move there, or excuse me, Cindrix move there. Uh, I'm going to stay with Ford. Yeah, well, I, I still think that Toyota is in the game. And like you said, there's a lot more of them in the game because of the fact that they can do all the things that the Fords and Chevy have done. But I still think that there's a lot to this whole thing to play out, Mike. Well, in terms of Chevrolet, Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson, the Kyle and Kyle show, they have been the class of the field for Chevrolet, though Chase Elliott uh, was also able to run up front, but rule one of the Daytona 500 is don't beat yourself. And one of that trio is going to be starting in the back. So you're saying not it's anybody's it. game. They're not out of uh, it yet. I think is. all three of these manufacturers are equally matched. I love what I'm seeing out of this Daytona 500. So and this far, is yeah. going to come down to exactly what we've seen. Don't who makes the least amount of state mistakes and can position them position themselves in the front of the pack with the track position after they make their pit stop. And then at the end really everything just goes crazy. The other thing that we've seen so far is this bottom line. They're capable of getting three wide and as soon as they do that bottom line isn't the line somehow so usually it's the one that it's the safest bet right it's safest play if you're in that car not so much today both times that bottom line is dissolved so 17 of the lead lap cars made their pit stop and line back up the rest of the lead lap which is 14 more cars made their pit stop and just came back in to top off for fuel, expecting a long green flag run. Well, and, and you want to put yourself in position to put the least amount of fuel in as possible. Here we go. Daniel Suarez had equipment interference on his stop, so has to start at the back. I haven't seen him all day, but look at that. Ricky Stenhouse, last year's winner of the Daytona 500. He's found his way to the front, folks. And on these styles of track, he typically does. He, he's won several races on super speedways, obviously winning the Daytona 500 last year. And here we go with the pushing and shoving at the front. Teammates working together for a while, at least here. Cedric and Blaney outside. The trust factor of that relationship's a little bit rocky, Kevin. 
Well, I think as you get towards the end of those stages, it gets a, a little bit looser, uh, but we, we heard loud and clear what, how that was going to work out from the 12th seat. Three wide, one car up, almost brushed the wall in the back. That was David Reagan with uh, the 11. Denny Hamlin. Yeah, you see Logano just like he did at the start of that last stage, already much, marching to that outside line. Here he comes, blocked by Chastain this time. Up the middle, the seven, Corey LaJoy. He's got help from Christopher Bell and more. And up comes Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick to hold back that middle line. And look at the bottom line going away again, just like we saw last time. Well, when, when that 23 car pulled up, when a front car pulls up like that, it immediately just pulls the momentum back in that, in that bottom lane. And, and as we've seen, that middle and top lane seems to be where you want to be as the, as the race kind of gets through these first few laps of the restart. You can see him right there in the middle of that middle lane. Kyle Busch right back to the front, marching forward. Pretty amazing. Got a fast hot rod. Kyle Larson right in the middle of all that. Right behind Kyle Busch. And behind them, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin coasting around in 19th. I say coasting because we've not seen Hamlin make a charge to the front all day, all evening. He's been content to ride out back. Well, he told us that yesterday, Clint. He said, I'm not worried about points. I want to I want to win the Daytona 500. He, he's very determined in, in doing what he needs to do to put himself in position to win the race at the end and, and he told us that he wasn't going to worry about it in the beginning absolutely according to plan so far denny hamlin aj allmendinger uh, who served a pit road penalty earlier has worked his way back to where now he is the lead car on the inside in sixth place and that just changed as Tyler Reddick dropped to the bottom. Here's the Toyota camp for Christopher Bell right up behind Corey LaJoy. Now thanks to Toyota we're going to stay right here for a run of commercial free racing from Daytona. We'll go Toyota all out. with Christopher Bell here in the middle doing everything he can do to, to make sure he can hold his car straight and Tyler Reddick leading the middle line in that nasty beast Toyota Camry up in the front middle lane you got one pushing that outside lane too. see Bubba Wallace pushing the outside all three lanes full of Toyotas yep, Truex on the bottom second car back So all those Toyotas positioned from 14th forward, five of them, not lined up together, but it seems like kind of managing things mid-pack. Kevin, you've told me moving into Daytona, you like the shape of the, the Toyota nose that they've done, done a, a good job of being able to enable these drivers to push the way they are today. Well, I don't know the specifics of exactly what they want to design on the car. And as we see Martin Truex pull up to go around for the lead there, all the way to the top lane in front of the 45 car of Tyler Reddick. So that allowed a lot of things to change in the pack, but he lined him up with two Toyotas in the top lane. A little bit slow moving up in front of Reddick, kind of slowed that bottle to middle lane up. Bot got themselves in trouble. There are Reddick and Bell who both won their dual races Thursday night by leading only the last lap. Now with eight full time Cup Series teams Toyota and TRD have had an unprecedented offseason. Here's more. With this new next gen car, we started a, a very intentional search for the right partner. During that search, the phone rang and it was actually Jimmy Johnson. I have watched Toyota work for many years. 
um, as a competitor and have had a great deal of respect for them. And now to be in the family, we can really operate at a tier one level. It's a big step going from six to eight, and that gives us more tools to work with. That gives Toyota nine cars in the Daytona 500, including Jimmy Johnson. Eight full-time cars in the series, the most they've ever had. Well, I tell you what, during that during that segment, we saw Martin Truex pull up to the outside lane and kind of kind of go slow across the middle lane and up to the top lane, and, and it just allowed the bottom lane to just pull right back in front of the race, uh, in front of the pack, and, and slow that middle and top lane down. Sure did, and how about Corey LaJoy holding tight on that outside line, the Chili's car, man, he's had a great spot this uh, this week. Saw him and his new opportunity at Spire Motorsports moving outside, inside. Can he keep him behind him? Now look at that bottom lane up front. A.J. Allmendinger spent 17 laps a lap down, but you never give up here, you get back into position. And right with him are David Reagan and Daniel Hemrick, who earlier were up front, then got shuffled back to the tail end of the lead lap, and here they are at the lead. Wow. Here's your progressive race summary at 144 laps, closing in on 50 to go. 15 leaders, 31 lead changes, and that's how many cars are on the lead lap. Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney won the two stages. Well, we saw some really tight, tight moves there. We saw Denny Hamlin move up, and we saw uh, Corey LaJoy in the seven car make a really, really, really tight squeeze there to get in front of Christopher Bell. And he gets the lead. Masterful class by Denny Hamlin. Up 19 spots from the back, meeting his teammates up front. He threw that car on his back and made some holes, made some moves, and got himself. You see him leading that middle of the lane. But the interesting thing, the, the interesting thing, he drove up there, but the interesting thing is when they change lanes, how much it slows the lane down that they're going into. Well, he told us that was the other thing, aggressive. Here, that here is his come. new approach. He said, forget him. I'm going to the front, and I'm going to do it by myself. I'm taking no prisoners. Here comes Hamlin's number 11 with his former teammate at Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch, right with him. It'll be 53 to go when they come back to the start finish line in what has already been a calamitous Daytona 500. What will happen over the final 50 laps here today? The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. 50 laps to go next time by. And in six of the last seven Daytona 500s, the eventual winner had not yet led the race by this point. Tonight, that includes Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, among others. Kevin, when I first came into this sport, I vividly remember you telling me when we were talking about Daytona, when is it time to go? 50 was the number you told me. Yeah, and we're seeing 50 is the time to go for a lot of these guys because the intensity level has picked up as we've gotten towards the end. That looked like Denny Hamlin almost brushed the wall right there off of turn two. Almost. Corey LaJoy, the leader, third generation racer. His granddad, a modified champ. His dad, two time Bush Series champ, and now racing safety advocate and seat builder Randy LaJoy. And here's Corey. Half of his eight top 10 finishes in the Cup Series have come here at Daytona. Regan. Well, Mike Corey having a great night up front right now. Something he told me earlier today, though, that this team would have to focus on as they continue to grow this year is being able to handle the pressure of being up front. Not only him as a driver, but the pit crew when it comes down to big moment situations. Well, if he can come in in the lead of the Daytona 500 for his last stop, that is going to be a great lesson for him on that pressure. Absolutely. Well, that's a great point. And, and as we're on the Toyota on board here with, with Denny Hamlin, we get a great view of the back of Corey LaJoy's car. But racing in the front and dealing with the things in the front is not how you deal with things in the middle or the back of the pack. Otherwise, those guys, here we go. Denny's tired of following him. Yep. Denny Hamlin trying to lead for the first time tonight. It's going to be right back up in front of him. The blocks start. Question is, will he stay in front of him on that outside or try to 
weave back and forth and slow both lanes down. Well, I think we know what Denny Hamlin wants to do. He wants to be in control. And being at the front is being in control. He can he can block and do all the things that he wants to do and be in the lane that he's the most comfortable with. Let's ride along with driver 11. Well, watch his eyes because that's that's really the most important thing that happens here at Daytona. You watch the eyes. You try to gauge the run uh, of the lanes behind you. Know when you need to keep your car square. When you see the bottom coming, you'll see him come down, not come down, <laughs> uh, because that's a choice that you got to make. Because you you as the driver are the one steering the ship, and if you like the guy pushing behind you, sometimes you just won't even make that move like Denny just did right there. He he thinks that that inside lane is is not going to be the lane to be in. Let's listen to Denny Spotter. That's Chris Lambert. Still half off. Three quarters off. Three quarters off. That's all that help. Talking about the help behind him. As we, as we listen to the spotter riding on board with uh, the ally on car cam of, of Alex Bowman there. You, you just you can hear the intense not the intensity but you the importance of the spotter and the communications to the driver you want that spotter to be as calm as possible and do everything that he can to relay all the information about the energy and the lines and everything that's happening. Toyota out front Chevy's filled the rest of the front four. The highest Ford in the race is now Chris Buescher back in eighth with Joey Logano. A lot can happen though in 46 laps. Want a chance to get in a stock car and drive around Daytona with Ross Chastain? I mean around the Speedway. Bush Light's offering that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and more. Follow at Bush Beer on X to learn more and enter before the end of the race. There's the Bush Light cam. Well, you, you see the throttle percentages now, and that's not from saving gas. That's just for where you are in the pack and having to check up from hitting the guy in front of you. You see that that bottom lane kind of accordion Kyle Busch get way out there. Alex Bowman come right back to his bumper but now he's got a gap. See the flames come out of the pipes right there from him lifting not wanting to hit him in the trioval because as we've seen if you bump somebody too hard in the trioval where that car is light it's going to spin out and cause a huge wreck. Well and that all started and you nailed it. You were all over it. Kyle Busch got out too far. Cannot get too far back. It is accordions your uh, line as soon as they get to you they have to lift and it stacks them up all the way back through the field the efficiency of that line goes downhill. Denny Hamlin out front with 45 to go in Daytona as we take you Fox side by side. The Bush Guide cold and smooth survival skills. Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. <gasps> How long have I been out here? About 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. The Valley of the Sun will roar to life this spring. This ought to get pretty wild here. Why is that, you may ask? Because NASCAR is coming to Phoenix, and it's going to be a weekend of good vibes the whole family won't forget. The best-in-class fan experience meets racing's toughest drivers for three days of action on and off the track, all surrounded by the beautiful Estrella Mountains. Oh, yeah, Let's go! Get your tickets now at phoenixraceway.com. Little Caesar slices and sticks is the world's greatest combination. Carl? Sorry, PB&J. How dare you? Half Italian cheese sticks, half pepperoni pizza. Get hot and ready slices and sticks for $6.99. Walk in and walk out between 4 and 8 p.m. Pizza, pizza. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. This is the make or break moment. The chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Hungry goats, drunken raccoons, driving dogs. And a partridge in a pear tree? No. Animal Control returns Wednesday, March 6th on Fox. I love your dress. Oh, thanks. 
I splurged a little because Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know, right? I've been telling everyone. Liberty. <gasps> Did you hear that? So I just said her first word. <laughs> Can you say mama? Liberty. <laughs> Can you say auntie? Liberty. <laughs> How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. Welcome back to the Daytona 500 as they round off turn four, coming to 41 laps to go. One more pit stop in the offing. And Denny Hamlin, who has three 500 wins but never a cup championship, out in front of Kyle Busch, who leads the inside lane. Bush has two cup championships, no 500 wins, 114 cup victories between the two drivers out front here. Cream's rising to the top. You see Logano pushing Bush down there. You're talking about a three-time Daytona champion, Hamlin. Bell, he has been so good on these racetracks, won his duel. Love what I see out of LaJoy, hanging tough for those guys. And Logano's fought his way back up into the front four in his Ford. Denny Hamlin has had such success here, but by razor thin margins, he's won three of the last eight. Six drivers have three or more Daytona 500 wins, and he won the clash this year, so he could repeat what happened in 2016. Most among active drivers in those categories. This Kyle Busch and his eight car means business. If anybody can give him a fit, it's going to be him. He needs some help to get the job done, but I'm impressed why he's doing this by himself. You see other teammates manufacture help. Kyle Busch has been the only one all day long that can, no matter what kind of adversity you throw at him, he can drive it right back to the front and put it in position, Kevin. Well, we saw that after his after his tire didn't come off but wasn't tight, and he drove right back to the front and, and now is right back where he was before that. Penalty before that, yeah. same scenario. The other one, Logano, he's been in the back to the front several times. Joey Logano's Hunt Brothers Pizza on board cam. Now we see Kyle Busch go, oh, oh, hit the wall. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He tried to fill that hole. It was really tight. Lost the nose as he crossed the wake of Corey LaJoy there in front. He hit it pretty hard too, guys. No Bad spot rate. as you're crossing that off of two. Let's see Track what flattens out. Well, for some Watch reason, the eight. yeah, the eight car of Kyle Busch there on the bottom. For some reason, he wanted to get up into that outside line, and that's a that's a pretty tight hole. And it looks like he just bad angle, bad what? spot to do it. He, hole tightened up. I would bet he. Let's see if there's any flames that come out of the pipe. Uh, hard to tell. All right, what we are need they? to try to get in line here, Randall. Or are we good where we're at? Like, what do I need to know? I mean, we're burning a ton of fuel. We're gonna have to stop before everybody else. So, but let him be. Well, there it was. He heard what he needed to see, tried to get up, tried to save some fuel. Unfortunately, mistimed hole right there. It got into the wall pretty hard. Let's see if it has enough damage to cause him trouble. These oh. cars are pretty tough, Clint. They have that they have that composite body that they run on all these cars and, and they're pretty durable as long as as long as it doesn't break a tow link or, or something in the suspension. But I wouldn't think as square as it hit. I think he's probably fine. Now, Brad Keselowski had been hanging out at the tail end of the lead lap. And uh, unnoticed by us, he has climbed to sixth place. Uh, interesting run toward the front for Brad, who's also trying to win his first Daytona 500. Wendy's always delivers for fans here in Daytona. Clint caught up with DJ Khaled to secure the biggie bag and see what else Wendy's has going on here. All right, DJ Khaled, Daytona 500, man. Right. What do you think about this? Everything's bigger in Daytona. We going Biggie, we going Wendy's. I'm excited to be here at Daytona 500. I love the energy. Look at the party. Yeah. Yeah. All of our fans can pull right through here in the drive-thru, get their own Biggie bag. You can't play yourself. You got to reward yourself and get yourself <laughs> a Biggie bag and secure that bag. You feel me? All right, Daytona 500. Yes. You feeling it? You like speed? What kind of driver are you? Well, I used to be a fast driver, 
but I like watching the fast race cars. Yeah, yeah. My kids love it, I love it. You never know what's gonna happen. It could be right around the corner, but that's straight away. You never know who's gonna be in the lead, but. You and them chair buddies, right? Your boys? Yes, Michael Jordan, that's my brother. Yes, absolutely. So you got some hot rides out on that racetrack. Is that who you pulling for? I want everybody to win. You know what I'm saying? That's who I roll with. You heard it. DJ right. Khaled pulling I love for everybody. everybody. The whole field. All right, folks, DJ Khaled wasn't the only celebrity here. Check out what else happened this weekend. All right, welcome to the first annual Wendy's Go Biggie Golf Invitational. We've got track house stars, Daniel Suarez and Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> and the biggest thing about today is they get some sweet prizes. So they get the Wendy's Biggie bag. Yes. They get a Wendy's red jacket. The drivers are walking up to the first hole. Let's see how they do. Yes. Our amigo Daniel Suarez, he's up first. Clearly, he has his eye on that biggie bag prize. And yeah, coming up next, it is Shane. And you know what? I know these two are friends on the track and teammates. Out here, things are heating up. What? That was all gas and no break. Congratulations to our amigo Daniel Suarez. He wins the Wendy's Go Biggie Golf Invitational. How you feeling? I feel great, Jamie. It was a lot of fun. The biggie bag. Woo! Biggie jacket, my friend, for winning. Look at you. There's your biggie bag. All that food for five bucks, right. that's my go-to. Ooh, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Just like you and me, bag boys. Bag boys, what you gonna do? Don't, what you gonna do when we bring your food? It. Go Biggie and get all this with the JBC bag for just five boys, bucks. 34 laps to go and Joey Logano the pole sitter for the 500, along with David Reagan, Brad Keselowski, and Chase Briscoe have put four Fords out in front of the field. There will be one more pit stop. What do we expect if it happens under green? Josh. We'll start with the 48 of Alex Bowman. About 10 laps ago, he was running inside the top 10. The team came over the radio, told him they weren't concerning, conserving, that is, enough fuel. They're concerned about that. Well, he's dropped back further than they wanted. Now back in 26, Regan. Josh, at the top of the show, I said Kyle Busch, one of the most fierce competitors on the racetrack. Usually with that fierceness comes fieriness on the radio, but he has been abnormally calm today, even with adversity, hitting the wall, a tire nearly coming off after a pit stop. Kyle has not said a word. He has been calm and focused in that race car. Jamie? Joey Logano, your leader right now, right where he started this race up front. He's been really happy with the race car. They just told him, manage your fuel when you can. And that's something hard to do that you guys in the booth have been talking about when you're leading this race. Why is it so important to save fuel now? Well, you just you want to be in the in the in the window that everybody else is in. And, and we saw Joey Logano go 100 percent and back up to 74 percent. But you don't want to have to pit by yourself. We heard somebody earlier talk about having to, to pit by themselves but those Fords have taken control I saw Brad Keselowski several laps ago duck down and started this Ford train on the bottom also gives you options on that pit lane the more fuel you save in that race car when you get it to pit road the tighter you have a pit stop the quicker you can get out of your box less fuel they have to put on well we saw Denny Hamlin do that the other night to win one of the duels he went from 17th to second and next thing you know he's he's right up in the front having a chance to win Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, if you go back to the first two stages, these drivers should be able to go to about lap 180, 181, 1920 to go. But I think you're seeing the Fords assemble on the bottom of the racetrack. I think they're thinking about coming a little earlier, maybe in the next five, six, seven laps. Like what you're putting down right there, picking it up, Larry. These Fords, when, as soon as they all move down, Kevin and I raise an eyebrow, they are definitely in position to pit amongst one another. So why is Brad Keselowski keeping close tabs on Joey Logano? Because Brad said Joey has been the best one second better than other drivers on the last three green flag pit stop cycles we've had in the 500 going into this year. There's something Logano does better than anybody else. Well, he gets on the pit road better. He's just better under braking on these super speedway tracks. He gets all the way to the left and is able to able to make up time. But that also goes with getting down pit road better, doing all the little things good. And Joey Logano just steps up when it's time to win races. 30 laps to go. Now, Saturday night on Fox Primetime Hoops, top-ranked UConn is on a mission to repeat as national champ. They'll take on Big East rival Villanova. They have their sights set on a major upset. Coverage begins Saturday, 7 Eastern, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app.
Logano trying to manage both lanes here. All right, pit stops coming up soon. So let's take our last scheduled side by side break so we can be with you to the finish. That's my team out there. If our network goes down, lives are at stake. Our comms have to work. Or the mission won't. That's why we partner with Verizon Frontline, the network that truly prioritizes first responders. So we don't worry about getting through. And they're the most reliable 5G network in America. Out here, reliability is everything. Extreme or routine, Verizon Frontline delivers. The number one network choice in public safety. Learn more. It's your mission. It's your Verizon. Everybody get their banking done? Let's go, drive, we gotta go! Someone's in a hurry. And... <laughs> One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Can we go? Yeah, faster. Oh, no sorry. You see, I get discounts for my safe driving with Snapshot from Progressive. You should see my savings, they're nuts. You told us he was a skilled wheelman. No, I'm a wheelman. It's family name on my mother's side. What? Irish. What does fearless look like? Like sliding through a glimmer of daylight. Side by side for the top spot. Like trading paint with a champion. Oh, and he spits a Like starting in the back of the pack and stopping at nothing till everyone is choking on your dust. Don't get your leg here, man. It's time, baby. What does fearless look like? Find out for yourself. Let's go! The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Today is just such a special day. The XFL and the USFL merge together to create one powerful spring football league called the UFL. These players are going to play hard-nosed, intense football, passionate football. Every play matters. They got one shot. They're going to ball out. Incredible. Spring football is here to stay. The UFL season kicks off March 30th on Fox and ABC. Coming to 25 laps to go, Joey Logano, David Reagan, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, the front four. No moves to pit road as yet. Down in the infield media center, Al Pierce of Auto Week covering his 55th Daytona 500. Al was here for Pete Hamilton's win for Petty Enterprises in 1970. Well, we always talk about strength in numbers, Kevin, and you finally see all those Mustangs lined up on the bottom. Pretty strong. Yeah, and they definitely have strength in numbers right now, and, and they also have the uh, shield to keep those guys on the outside from getting to the bottom when it's time to pit, because at some point they're going to have to pit here shortly. We know that's coming, and that's a very good point. Got the Ford, on, Ford performance on board with Ryan Blaney right here. A football field a second. Those are yard markers coming off turn number four. Now up in that lead pack Ryan Priest third on the inside in the 41. He is the first car one lap down trying to maintain that position to get back on the lead lap if we have a caution. Right now he's an asset. Stay right there. Keep this baby rolling. Here's the Advent Health Cam for Eric Jones. In 43 Daniel Hemrick just ahead. Bubba Wallace just ahead to the outside. This is the most laps Joey Logano has led in the Daytona 500. When he won in 2015, he led 31 circuits. Tonight, he's been out front for 41. He's been by far uh, the strongest Ford. But Brad Keselowski's team added a third car just for the 500. David Reagan, well-known super speedway star. He's won here. He's in second place with Brad in fourth. Jamie. 
Yeah, and how about David Reagan? He's one of our analysts here on NASCAR on Fox, and he'll run a race or two a year, but he got this opportunity from Brad Keselowski, and he is showing exactly why he was the guy for the job. Two career wins. They both came on this style of track, and he's going to be going for the win here in no time at all. Great job by David Reagan tonight. David does a lot of simulator work and wheel force work and things for pit stops. Ford. Here we go. A couple of the Toyotas break off. Five cars coming this time. By Ty Gibbs. Well, it's two Toyotas and three Chevrolets. Kind of a mixed bag. Well, that's actually Riley Herbst there in the I'm Monster sorry. Energy car. Yeah, it's Riley Herbst. Yep. I think you're going to see. Possibly these Fords stacked up on the bottom trying to make their move to the pits. This is time time for that magical stop. No mistakes. Do not get caught speeding cannot recover from it. And from a driver's standpoint this is the most intense time when you know you have to get get to pit road and get everything that you can get but also not hit anybody. There is Ty Gibbs. Now the three the cars that just pitted were not among the leaders at the front of the pack come the Toyotas and they are from the back of the pack. Seven cars, eight cars pitting here. Bell, Raddick, Truex, it's all, most of the Toyotas. Denny is not amongst them. Eric Jones, Bubba Wallace, there's Ty Gibbs in the 54, and Nemechek. Fuel only and away. They'll come out in a pretty tight pack, at least uh, five of them will here. All right, how long do the Fords and Chevys stay out? Every lap you run, that's less time you have to spend on pit road. Another group, a small group of three, peel off from the back. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch, unlikely allies pitting here. Well, they were together on the racetrack, and sometimes you just have to go with the fastest car and whoever's around you at that particular time. And this is what we talked about earlier. Sometimes your strategy is out the window, and you just have to do what you have to do when it's time to stop. Kind of surprised me it was just a couple cars, though. Justin what? Haley pitted with them, but it took them a while to get the uh, fuel can connected to Haley. This time, this time, this time, this time. Here they come. That's the Ford boys. No mistakes. Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski peel off. That's Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, David Reagan, Ryan Blaney trying to muscle up through five wide. They come to the timing line. Well, we saw exactly what Brad Keselowski was talking about with Joey Logano. Look at that lead that he has on those guys, and that all came in the breaking zone. See Chastain still on racetrack, still. Leading the Chevrolet camp, Stenhouse in tow. Logano and Keselowski get out first with Reagan. And those three hooked up may be tough to beat if we stay green here. Well, the games are going to begin on the back straightaway. Here comes, here comes everybody else. Ross Chastain in front of Kyle Larson on the outside. Stenhouse and Suarez on the inside. William Byron, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, all the Hendrick cars. And Anthony Alfredo. Yeah, and all these guys that are on pit road right now, they're pitting later, so it should be less time in the in the pits because of the amount of fuel that they're taking. Big pack coming off turn number four as they leave and try to get back up to speed. You see the Ford camp right there in your screen, folks. Got a good chain going. Yep. Getting up through the. But there is a huge pack behind them coming. Logano, Kozlowski, Reagan, Blaney, and more. If that outside lane stays open, they're just going to inhale this whole field because they are at speed. You see all three groups right there connecting, merging in one. Logano drops to the inside, trying to sniff a draft from the Toyotas ahead of him. Back to the outside. 
Well, and that's all that momentum that you have with the, with the more speed because you've been out there long, and you see Kyle Larson do a great job. That's exactly what they needed to do. Kyle Larson and, and William Byron staggered themselves, and Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski have to weave in and out like you're going through a set of cones. You see Chastain, they were the last ones to pit. So far, so good. They were able to make those blocks. Logano, can they hold him back? Chastain's going to have to slow him down, and he does. Stenhouse, not so much. Boy, Logano and Keselowski are going to be a tough combination to beat. Well, they, they got beat right there because of some guts, and those guys putting those blocks on and slowed that line down because they did a way better job getting on and off of pit road and had those guys beat by a fair amount of time, uh, and that all came from defense with those Chevrolets. Stenhouse leads the inside, Chastain the outside. There's Logano and Keselowski. I agree with you, Kevin. The Ford camp led by Logano, they did a, a fantastic job on pit road collectively. Their efficiency of the pit stop was much better than the others, but them slowly but surely one by one slowing their, their line down by the blocks enabled them to stay in front, talking about Chastain. Yeah, and Chastain gave up that outside line to go down in front of Ricky Stenhouse in, a, in another Chevrolet. I'm not sure that was the right thing to do because I just believe that Joey Logano has always been one of the best pushers. But as this goes, you can see that it's getting physical. We're three wide in the middle of the pack back there, and things are going to start to happen in a much more physical way than they have. Flip side of what you said, I like what Chastain did. If I'm him, I'm getting on the bumper of Stenhouse and that 47. Yeah, I don't want to be on the bumper of that. The reason 42. that it helped, that three car there was slow car. He was getting a draft. Big block. Chastain Pulled up, up front top of the block. Logano. They're going to get three wide here, stacking them up. That was close. Yeah, three wide mid pack on back. Now, now Stenhouse to the lead. Last year's Daytona 500 winner. And Suarez leading the inside group. Chevrolet is to the front. Well, if you like pack racing, Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Atlanta for more high speed action. It's the Ambetter Health 400. It kicks off with pre race at 2 Eastern and the green flag at 3, and it's only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. More of the same. Well, now, he's, now we see Daniel Suarez at the front of the racetrack. So this is going to continue changing as we go through all these shifts and blocks and everything that's getting ready to happen. Well, it all happened on that outside. Chastain made a move. Sinhouse was slow to the block, didn't get up in front of them, got him bottled up. Got him three wide. That was close. Talk about the importance of oh, finding man. your teammate and getting online and lined up with your manufacturer and your teammate. It's, huh. it's getting ready to get ugly here, boys. Last, Last year, fun. the top seven positions in the Daytona 500, seven different teams in the top seven spots. Chase Elliott to the front. Bold move on the outside of his teammate, Byron. It was so tight off the two there, Kevin. See the two Hendrick cars down on the bottom. Alex Bowman pushing William Byron right up to the front. And Chevrolet is now, now controlling all three lanes. Yeah, and right now the control is, is kind of out the window because they are just pushing and shoving to try to get all the way to the front, and the, the pushes just keep getting bigger and bigger. You see the flames coming out of Eric Jones' car there in the 43. And we're told that Bubba Wallace, two-time Daytona 500 runner-up, it's going to have to stop. They didn't get enough fuel to make it to the finish. Three wide. Stop. This energy back there, Ford. I, I look back, four rows back. You see Reddick back there in that black and yellow car. Right in there. Calamity, buddy. It is coming. You can feel the intensity really ratcheting up right here. I'm with you, Clint. The I Toyotas coming. kind of scattered between the lanes, not really together. But look on the high side, 22-6-12. Those three Fords together, all proven winners. Logano, Keslowski, Blaney. If they can get to the front, they could be tough to deal with. Big pushes in that middle lane. Well, we see the top lane surge with a with a good push, and that middle lane they they had big push, pushes, but they just got all squirrely there and, and checked the momentum up. But Ross Chastain is putting his car 
right where he needs to be to keep those guys behind there. And what Joe Logano is going to do is try to shove him out there too far so he can give himself some space to try to sneak underneath him. That's exactly right. And take oh. Keselowski, but Keselowski moved him out of the way. Here comes Brad to the outside. Kozlowski looking for second. Chastain trying to hold back both lanes. That's a tall order here. Listen to this spotter. Timely blocks. An untimely block, one little bit, one little slip up by one inch, and it's going to be all over with. Well, it didn't cycle exactly the way that Logano wanted it to cycle, but he got Ross Chastain out there far enough to give himself a lane, and he winds up right back in front of Brad. Chastain spotter, Brandon McReynolds, pretty busy right here as Logano pulls alongside. Coming to 10 laps to go. 30 drivers on the lead lap. Each trying to find the way to victory lane in the sport's biggest race. Give is over. Take, take, take from now on. Don't Den give an inch. Denny Hamlin said it all week. He said, I'm going to be selfish. Don't care about manufacturers. Don't care about teammates. I'm here for me. You see everybody lifting. You see the flames out of the pipes. Both lanes, all three lines for that matter. That's them stacking up. That's blocks up front, stacks them up behind. That's where the trouble's going to happen. And when they stack up that bad, you have to let off the throttle in order to check the car up enough and probably touch the brake as well. But that just gives you an idea of the energy of this pack as they are all keep pushing and shoving their way forward. Here we go again. Chastain, Lone Wolf up here leading this pack with those two Fords behind him. Block, block, block. He knows they're wanting around him. They're going to make a move. Speaking of moves, Keselowski to the inside again. Back up in front of Logano. And Chastain saw it coming and went up with him. Now Logano the outside. They can't get around. Whoa! Keselowski gets turned by William Byron. Blaney gets caught up. Gilliland, Truex, Hamlin, and more. All those Fords were struggling to get around Chastain. Who could get around and get that clean air track position first? That's what happened. Ah, we, we, you, oh. just, you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. I mean, it's a parking lot down there. Cars parked everywhere. Blaney out. Big damage on him. Totally it, broke on the back. That one's done. Keselowski all wadded up. Gilliland, the black and red car right with him. Uh, Anthony Alfredo there. Reddick, uh, massive damage on him. Thursday night winner, Tyler Reddick. Martin Truex. Eric Jones comes to pit road. So does Kyle Larson. Denny Hamlin made it back to the pit. So did Chris Busher. Well, it just a lot of damage. It just had it. It just always gets to this point as you get to the end of the race. The pushes get harder. Everybody's just throwing caution to the wind to say the heck with it. I'm going ah. to the front. Martin Truex tore it. He's throwing bad right there. Well, Chastain, I mean, he was, I'd say he was a lone wolf up there. He was throwing blocks left and right, and they were making moves. It was Alex Bowman uh, with a push into William Byron that did not go well. But it was the movement in front of them started stacking those guys up. Yeah, when they get when they get to blocking and moving out of line, those those bump drafts just become misaligned and that all that energy going forward, they, they can't stop it and they wind up running into the back of each other misaligned and they wreck just like they did right there. Chase Briscoe, the Mahindra tractors cam as he said stopped. Eric Jones, Ryan Blaney. Here's some uh, audio from William Byron. Yeah, I think we just got crossed up there. Like this, the six and the one were changing lanes a bunch, and I was getting pushed. Yeah, and that's exactly what we, what we just mentioned. So let's take a look at it. Yeah, and, and you're going to see William Byron right here. Oh, we got, we got. Actually, all three of those. Yeah, that's a pretty. All good, three of those. I, I'm glad you hit that. Yeah, and you see Alex Bowman up the racetrack, and then. They start zigging and zagging here and. Well, obviously, 
William Byron and Bowman, that's where it ended up. But the, the movement from the six and the 22, jockeying for position, trying to outduel one another to that position of passing Chastain, that's what stacked all those guys up and got them in trouble. Those guys were going for it. Chastain was holding them up. You saw the six go to the bottom. You saw the 22 go to the outside. The race was on, and unfortunately, those guys behind him. This were gives just, you a much better view yeah. right there. You see the 24 car just being pushed, and sometimes you just you're not aligned, and you know you're not lifting, and you, that car gets to moving around, and you hope it works out, and it just didn't work out right here. We saw this same scenario playing out at the duels the other night when Blaney got in a wreck. You really can't pin it on anybody. It's hard racing, everybody going for it, but it, when those cars move in front of them, it slows the energy down. Let's ride with Alex Bowman. He was trying to stay off of him. And you heard him lifting out of the gas. Several times. This probably tells the other part of the story. You're not going to run three wide that long. Well, we said it several laps ago, right? We both said it. The, the way that the pushes were coming, it was just a matter of, of time before this happened. And, and with the energy and everything that, that there is right now, it's just too much for the cars to handle to go straight. And that was a classic example of just getting shoved a little bit too hard and getting out of shape, and it's not time to lift. There's Denny Hamlin. you could do long for the ride landed right in his lap and we'll look out the back of Ross Chastain's number one oh. and this is Ross Chastain's crew led by Phil Surgeon They were out in front of it. I mean, that was inches that they hmm. they missed the back bumper of that car. Yeah, when Kozlowski turns. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. If that back if that left rear quarter panel wasn't curved in a little bit, I mean, it, it went right with the curvature of the left rear quarter panel. Ross Chassain and Brandon McReynolds did a phenomenal job of keeping those guys behind him. Had he slipped up one time and missed a block, he'd have been right in the middle of that. All right, let's do this uh, next replay in real time. Chase Briscoe, the Mahindra tractor cam. Days of Thunder, right there. I mean, it, it, it's it's just a typical super speedway wreck that happened at the front of the pack and at the end of the straightaway, and there's just nowhere to go and nothing to do. You just hope you're not damaged as bad as everybody else. Now the driver's not just there along for the ride. Let's watch Daniel Suarez. Saw that uh, steering wheel spin hard. That's why he's got his hands off it to avoid injury. Yeah, and I saw him squint his eyes after that first hit. That was those were big hits. All right, Denny Hamlin next. Yeah, th those hits are coming from behind the car, and that's the, those are the worst hits in this car as you're getting rear-ended 
and you see his head fly forward. Those are actually coming from the back of the car. Some of them are from the front, but the first the first couple shots are from the back of the car, and that that's just the the violence of the wrecks that happen in this vehicle. And here's uh, Eric Jones. He never stopped driving. No, he's, he driving it all the way, but I like the way he had it hands on the wheel where he couldn't get a thumb or a finger caught in the spokes if that thing well, he turned around on you. Yeah, Throttle too. He was yep. he was wheeling it. Oh, that one got his wrist. Yeah, he's that he's, one got his wrist. Grabbed his hand. Yeah, he, a tough Ryan. week for Ryan Blaney. Thursday night and Monday night. Joey Logano. You see how quick they want to get their hands off the wheels with these rack and pinion steerings, Kevin. Tell us how much stronger that is than what it used to yeah, be. Yeah, and that's the reason that you see a lot more of these guys take their hands off the wheel because it, the rack will just jerk your hands out, and if your thumbs are in there, it'll break them. We saw Ryan Blaney grab his wrist there. Eric Jones, he held onto the wheel, but he holds the wheel with his thumbs up on top of the wheel. A lot of guys do not. They hold their thumb around the wheel, and the spokes will literally rip your, rip your thumbs off and break them. Yeah, I think it was his wrist. It could have been his thumb. I mean, to your point, usually is that's why it hooks your wrist yeah and a lot of times when that wheel is spinning around like that it sometimes it'll hurt your shoulder a little bit too as the wheels come in the opposite way but you'll see his, Watch his right you'll hand. see his right hand right here oh Ryan's ready to get out of here he's ready to go home yeah. yes Todd Gilliland, uh, the last driver to climb from his car on the back stretch. Everyone whose car could not be driven back to pit road climbed out uh, and is okay. Walked to the ambulance to be taken to the infield care center and checked out. 18 cars in all involved in this pileup at the end of the back straightaway, which is now the world's fastest salvage yard. You knew it was coming. That energy was building. At the end of the day, Tona 500. No more take or no more give. It was all taken. Unfortunately, wiped a bunch of them out, Kevin. Well, now it's just a matter of, of how many of these guys are wrecked really bad and, and who's not wrecked bad enough to be done. Uh, even if you're if you're not wrecked bad enough to be done, it's um, you know, it's good to salvage some of those positions. But man, we got a, a ton of really big names on this list. Now, not all of these cars are out of the race. That's Roughly right. half of them have made it back to pit road. But with the red flag out, no work is allowed to be done on these cars until the red is lifted and the yellow flag resumes. So cars that were either undamaged or chose not to stop uh, prior to pit road being opened are lined up here on the back straightaway. And as soon as the track is clean enough to resume competition, uh, the yellow will come out, pit road will be opened, and they'll get serviced. Let's go down to pit road, Jamie Little. Bill Surgeon is the crew chief for Ross Chastain, the leader. Haven't talked about Ross a whole lot tonight, and here we are, eight laps to go, and you guys are leading. How good is the car, and do you think that it's good enough to win this? Yeah, car's been strong all night. First stage, uh, played the strategy right, had some good help, finished third. Um, second stage was a little quieter. We had dropped back to try to avoid some of the some of the melee and never had an opportunity to really get back up into it. Finished in the teens. Uh, stage three, we played the strategy right. We positioned ourselves well. Uh, never can never can tell what's going to happen from here. I expect another caution. Um, but car's been strong. The guys have done a great job on pit road, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, Pitbull is one of the owners of this team. How cool would it be for Pitbull to be holding that Daytona 500 trophy? We'll find out soon, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Three, four Chevrolets in the top five right now. Austin Sindrick, the only Ford. And the first Toyota is Christopher Bell in sixth. 
As we as we go through this scenario here and we see all these cars wrecked and, and now we see these cars sitting on pit road. Um, Larry, can you can you explain to us the process that uh, the DVP uh, clock that they have to go through and everything that that the, the rules require after you're wrecked? Yeah, Kevin, it's, it's the damage vehicle policy, and you basically have seven minutes, and that, that minute is a cumulative, and it starts from the time you enter pit road to the time you exit pit road. And if you leave pit road and come back around, the clock doesn't reset. It continues to pick up and run. And, and at a super speedway, you have to have things like the rear bumper in place. You have to have the, the door panels in place, the deck lid, the rear spoiler. A lot of things that has to still be on that car and functional. All the flaps, hood flaps, roof flaps, all those things still have to be functional. And that has to all be done in a total time of seven minutes, including entering and exiting pit road. Thanks, Larry. Let's uh, go to the Advent Health Care Center and join Josh Sims. Yeah, and Ryan Blaney checked and released from the Care Center. Ryan, we were here Thursday night, very frustrated after that. How does this wreck compare? How is the risk and the emotions? Well, I'm definitely not as frustrated after as after Thursday night. This was just, you know, racing at the end of the 500, and uh, this one didn't hurt nearly as bad, so that part's nice. But, uh, yeah, it's shame. I thought we had a shot at it. Um, up in the first, you know, few, few rows, we would be kind of, Second in the road, depending on where the block was kind of thrown, and um, thought we were in a decent spot, uh, especially if the six got to the inside of the one. I could kind of finally get behind Joey and try to get hooked up with him, but um, yeah, just unfortunate name with our Pete Menards Ford Mustang, really fast. Um, but yeah, the wheel got, I got turned. That was, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the wheel snapped. I usually let go of the wheel, but I didn't think it had anything in it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm okay. My wrist is good and uh, just one of those weird deals. But uh, proud of the effort by the 12 boys. Shame we tore up a couple race cars. But um, go on next week. Thanks. I'm glad you're okay, Ryan. Well, that's good to hear on his wrist because the way he held it up right there, you never know. One tough cat right there. So there sit the cars that were not involved or were not damaged enough to go to pit road. We still got plenty of horses in this race. Chastain, Bowman, teammates, Byron behind him, Sendrick, Chase Elliott, he is back. I like Bush back there. He ain't out yet. Josh. Down here with Brad Kozlowski, checked and released from the care center. Brad, we know so close once again to having a shot to win the great American race. What did you see there from the in-car and, and, and what happened in your perspective? Yeah, in-car, all I know is got hit from the back. So just uh, one of those deals at this track, you know, everybody pushes. That's how you race here. And uh, we got caught up in it. Uh, just glad to be competitive, glad to be running up front, glad to have a chance. We were uh, making the pass for the, the lead to, to win the Daytona 500. That's about all you can ask for with eight laps to go. And uh, it just uh, it didn't work out. Thanks, Brett. Brad and Joey going for it. I mean, that's, that's what it is. That's what you want. You want your best drivers going for the biggest race of the year. They were going for it. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And every one of them will be back uh, behind the wheel and ready to try to win next Sunday in Atlanta. Regan? Well, Chase Elliott's crew chief, Alan Gustafson. You got your driver in position now. You've been up front today. You've been in the middle today. You've been all over the racetrack. A masterful job of getting through that wreck. Can you get it done now? Yeah, that was amazing. I'm, uh, the seat's kind of parted for us to make it through there. So, yeah, guys have done great. Chase has done great. The Napa Chevy's been strong all day. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we don't have any left front tire damage that would necessitate a stop here. But I think it's good enough. We can let it roll. It's the Daytona 500, right? Got to give it a shot. So it's going to be hairy, but, you know, we're in a good shot to go compete for it. So hopefully we can go get it for uh, everybody at HMS. Mr. H is for you. Good luck. Thanks, Al. Josh. Joe Logano released from the care center. Joey, from your perspective, what happened there and what are the emotions you're feeling right now? <laughs> I'm pissed off if that's my emotions. Um, I don't know. Uh, we were just, I was riding up against the top there, and I uh, just know Brad got turned up into me. I don't know exactly what happened. So, um, the one was throwing hellacious blocks most of the time. I know that, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see what started it there. Um, so, just a bummer to show Pencil Mustang. It was so fast. I think it could lead a line like you wouldn't believe. Um, it had so much speed in it. It's just, uh, it's speedway racing. It's a lot of fun until it sucks. And I'm on this end of it today. Thanks, Joey.
Joey Logano started from the pole, led 45 laps tonight, more than any other driver, and arguably, arguably had the best car here tonight. Well, he definitely led a bunch of laps and, and did everything he needed to do. You just sometimes it's like I talked earlier, it's 50 50 whether you make it, whether that just misses your back bumper like Ross Chastain or it clips the back of it and wrecks you like it did Joey Logano. Just go through those cycles and waves of, of being on both sides of it. Might be my favorite co uh, quote ever. A lot of fun till it sucks. Yeah. The big one happens at Daytona. We are under the red flag with eight laps to go. This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Truex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. <laughs> and quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. That's my team out there. If our network goes down, lives are at stake. Our comms have to work. Or well, the mission won't. That's why we partner with Verizon Frontline, the network that truly prioritizes first responders. So we don't worry about getting through. And they're the most reliable 5G network in America. Out here, reliability is everything. Extreme or routine, Verizon Frontline delivers. The number one network choice in public safety. Learn more. It's your mission. It's your Verizon. If you have chronic kidney disease, you can reduce the risk of kidney failure with Farsiga because there are places you'd rather be. Farsiga can cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration, urinary tract or genital yeast infections, and low blood sugar. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsiga and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of disinfection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. Wendy's breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. Bis squared. Egg and cheese biscuit and sausage biscuit. Two biscuits. I'm impressed Tyler knew what squaring was. Math lit. No matter what you call it, choose wisely. Choose Wendy's breakfast two for three. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Well, the bottom dropped out for 18 cars in this pileup in turn number three. And the red flag has been lifted. Seven laps to go. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Well, after all that, Hendrick Motorsports has three cars in the top five. Rick Hendrick started his team 40 years ago today with five employees in a 5,000 square foot rented shop. I think their gift shop today is bigger than that and they have over 500 employees and a ton of wins. I can't believe I'm saying this. I don't even know if it makes sense, but if anybody won that wreck, it was Hendrick Motorsports. Still having three of their cars in this thing in the top five, Hendrick Motorsports might be their day. Well, most last time they won the Daytona 500 was the last time they didn't sit on the pole. Oh, by the way, and didn't they sit on the pole this year. And they are not pitting. Well, we see some, we see a whole bunch of cars pitting. 
I, I, no, the no. 300 cars that are in that. No, no, no. I, are no. Not, but yes. yeah, I, I'm, we see a whole. Well, I'm surprised, like you, that that so many are pitting. But I think a lot of them probably slid their tires, trying to either they were spinning in the wreck or trying to slow up so hard that they slid the tires under the wreck. So they went through a lot of debris and different things. So everybody just wants to keep it clean and put some tires on. And if you don't have that that track position up front, why not? Might as well make sure that don't no flat tires, no damage. Let's get back out there. Six laps to go in the Daytona 500. Oh! Teammates! Around they go in a hard crash. Daytona 500, are you kidding me? This one sucks when you're that close. Austin yeah. Sindrick, the winner of the Daytona 500. Second's the worst, man. <laughs> He's so close. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Daytona 500 winner. That is Firebird One, a General Motors dream car conceived by Chief Stylist Harley Earl, and it tops the Harley Earl Trophy, the most coveted single day prize in stock car racing. One of these drivers will win it in as few as five laps from now. The big one stays on display here, the small one goes to the winner. Ross Chastain chose the outside for this restart. William Byron took the bottom. Teammate uh, Alex Bowman to the outside. Then Austin Sindrick inside and Chase Elliott outside. Four Chevys in the front five, Sindrick's Ford, and then Christopher Bell's Toyota, which has been hanging around the top half dozen all night. A lot of Chevys up front, eight of the top ten. Justin Marks. Has Chastain in the lead and rookie Zane Smith in ninth. Two drivers in the top ten. Kevin, you heard Logano in his interview talking about Chastain, the blocks that he was putting on. Can he keep that up? Well, it's not. He's not going to stop. I can promise you that. He's going to do everything he can do to, to try to win the Daytona 500. And he knows, all those guys know, they know the magnitude and the history and everything that comes with the Daytona 500. And this is just, like you talk, one of those races that you just do more than you would normally do. All right. 40th anniversary of these Hendrick boys, three of them up there. How do they work together and try to pounce on him, make, take advantage of that? Well, they lined up. A, it's interesting the way that they lined up because you got William Byron on the bottom with Austin Sendrick behind him, and then you have uh, Ross Chastain and, and the 48 of Alex Bowman and the 9 of, of Elliott behind him. So it's just all going to come down to the pushes. Only one driver in the top 10 has been to Daytona 500 victory lane, and that's Austin Sindrick. Ross Chastain won the last race of last year at Phoenix. Last person to do that and then win the 500, Jeff Gordon, 1998 to 99. Four laps to go. We're back to green. See that top row? Really, everybody's formed up good, and, and I think as, as we just saw that huge wreck, I don't think that's going to keep any of those guys from pushing any harder than they were before. They're going to all keep pushing and shoving and trying to win this race. Yeah, that's out the window. Not an option anymore. Strength in numbers, Chevrolet dominates the top ten right now. Keep an eye on that rearview mirror. The energy is going to come from these pushes from behind. The accordion is going to be in effect. They're going to come. They're going to come fast. Seven of the top ten are Camaros with Cindric Ford, Bell, and Nemechek in Toyotas. Somebody's going to make a move. Where's this move going to come from? See that energy. The shot from Chase Elliott into his teammate Bowman. That's going to provide an opportunity for them to make a move. Cindric Ray Byron a shot. Pushed into the lead. Can he get him far enough in front for Cindric to make the lane change and have a shot to win it? Comes this outside lane again, Kevin. Well, that's going to change the momentum of, of that middle lane, and that bottom lane still formed up. You see. 
uh, Chase Elliott pull in front of the outside lane, and there goes there goes Ross Chastain because it all broke up. The contact there midfield as William Byron, who succeeded Jeff Gordon in the Hendrick number 24, is out front. Huge pushes on that outside. They kept getting in, and one another had to back off. Accordion effect stacked them up. Everybody had to lift. Or Broke that line up big time. Cindric tried the top. No, got back in line. Now Chastain has a push. A lot of energy on this outside. Chastain, here he comes, Kevin. Well, we saw the, the same thing that happened to the top lane with the bottom lane. They got broke up, and now we've got William Byron leading the bottom lane with Austin Cindric behind him, Ross Chastain leading the outside lane. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Here's Bank, and away they go. That is Cindric into Chastain and up into traffic. Did they complete that lap? Did the leader get the white flag? This Caution could be waving. It. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I don't know if he got it out in time. I think. I believe they saw the white flag. I think it's. I think it's William Byron. I think so too. It was a block by him, caused Chastain to move down. Ross Chastain gets away, and will come around to see the final flag of the night. We are under caution with the accident happening just past the start finish line. Austin Sindrick going for a wild ride here, as did Ross Chastain. You see the light on, you see Bowman ahead of Byron right there, but need to back it up and see this again. And we'll await a ruling from NASCAR. Regardless, if it's going to be those two, you see the checkered flag out. It's a Hendrick Motorsports win. The question is, who won it for him? And the Daytona 500. The race winner will be the 24. We'll need the 24 to start the finish line. Goes to victory lane, William Byron. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Rudy Fugel, his crew chief. You want? Oh, yes, we want. Unbelievable. 40 years to the day, Hendrick Motorsports goes 1 2 at the Daytona 500. Oh, yeah, boys. Oh. Byron's last win came at Texas in September. It's his 11th career win. Started out playing video games, racing on his computer, says, Dad, I want to try this. Oh. They came to Charlotte and hopped in legend cars. He started winning all the way to NASCAR, won in Truck Series Xfinity oh, Channel. Now, Daytona. Well, and, and you look at last year and everything that William Byron and this team were able to accomplish and now to win the Daytona 500. These guys are for real. I love the progression that William Byron has made as a driver with his team, and, and here they are again. Huge year for William Byron last year. He just keeps the momentum up, keeps getting better. How about the 24 and victory lane at Daytona again? What a ride. What a finish. That was wild. It was so close to the start-finish line, I couldn't tell if, the, if they got to it or not. We know it's official. Obviously, it was. One, two finish for Hendrick Motorsports. You can't script it any better than that, folks. Unofficially, 22 cars finish on the lead lap. Some of them pretty well bent up. Not this one. A few battle scars from the way the day went along, and he was. He didn't trigger the big one, but was involved in it. Got turned into Brad Keselowski. Well, just some advice. I would stay out of the grass. I, we, <laughs> want, we want to see some burnouts. Uh, please don't get stuck. He's going to go right out there across Daytona. I don't blame him. That's where I'd want to park it. Byron had never finished better than 21st in the 500. Scoring Rick Hendricks 300 second. NASCAR Cup Series win. And the night for Hendrick Motorsports tying them with Petty Enterprises for the most 500 wins. Richard Petty won seven. Lee Petty, Pete Hamilton went to victory lane for that North Carolina based team.
William Byron goes to capture the flag after an event filled Daytona 500 in which he led only the final four laps. They came with a different plan, and boy, did it pay off for him, Hendrick Motorsports. <laughs> On the finish of the race, instead of going back to look at scoring loops, the race ends at the moment of caution. NASCAR goes back, reviews video evidence to determine the position of the cars and name a winner, who must still then complete the final lap and come to the checkered flag. Tonight, that was William Byron. He becomes a record sixth different driver to win the 500 for Hendrick Motorsports. Jamie Little, trackside. And William Byron at 26 years old, you've worked so hard in such a short period of time. How does Daytona 500 champion sound to you right now? It sounds really damn good. It's uh, the thanks an awesome crowd coming out. Um, I have so many emotions. Uh, obviously, hey, what happened on the back stretch? I just got pushed and got sideways, but um, just so proud of this team, whole Exalta team, uh, 40th anniversary to the day on Monday. So just um, extremely blessed and thankful for all the opportunities. And um, yeah, we just want to keep it going. We have a lot to prove this year, and uh, this is a good start, obviously. And Daytona 500, it's freaking awesome. Let's go. William, you have not had a good track record here. Never even finished in the top 10. What was the difference here tonight in getting yourself positioned to be there at the end? I don't know, just really good strategy. Uh, we, we obviously laid back and tried to save fuel for most of the race, and uh, we would get up there at the end of the stages and make some moves, and uh, I see boss man coming up here. But uh, yeah, just thankful for great power under the hood, all of our partners, Chevrolet, everybody that, that allows us to do this. and. I'm just a kid from <laughs> racing on computers and uh, winning the Daytona 500. I can't believe it. I wish my dad was here. He's sick, but this is for him, man. We've uh, we've been through so much, and we sat up in the grandstands together and, and watched the race. This is so freaking cool. Go see your Thank boss you. right there, Mr. Hendrick, waiting for him. Alex Bowman completes the Hendrick 1-2 finish in the Daytona 500. You came really close, Alex. How close was that from your perspective as you crossed the line? Yeah, I was pretty sure William had us, but um, you're going to let him debate it, right? I think a couple hundred more feet, and obviously we had the run, but uh, just so proud of everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. It's 40 years to, uh, to the day since they ran their first race. So um, to get a Hendrick Motorsports 1-2, have uh, have the 24 car in victory lane. Obviously, I wish it was our Ally 48, but uh, it was a great day for us. So proud of everybody. We did everything we could right. Um, I feel like I made a couple mistakes early and kind of learned throughout the day. And uh, when it came down to the end, I feel like I made the right moves. Having to go up and block the top lane at the end uh, with like three to go there, that just slowed us down and kind of killed the momentum of the middle. But um, still second place in the Daytona 500, HMS 1-2. Uh, great for Chevrolet and everybody involved. So. I uh, wish it was one spot better, but still proud of the whole team. Thanks, Alex. Chevrolet considered an underdog coming into the 500. The Toyotas won the qualifying races. The Fords won the front row. Chevrolet takes home the big trophy. 100 wins at Daytona for Chevrolet. All right, let's back this up and watch. You see the momentum on the outside, Chastain. Bowman pushing him. Watch the energy coming. Chastain gets out on him. All of a sudden, here comes the energy from Bowman to Chastain. Big pushes coming. Puts Chastain in a in a momentum situation. Byron sees him coming. He hears him block right there. Chastain moves, shoots the gap, clips Cendric, turns him around. Yeah, and Chastain had the right idea of where he needed to go. He just, went for it. The, the caution, I mean the caution came out at the wrong time. And William Byron winds up, winds up winning the race uh, with, the, with the timing of the caution on the white flag lap. From Alex Bowman. Watch this push. Here he goes for the gap, shoots it, oh, closed man. in. He was going for it. All those guys are going for it. Everybody was doing exactly what they had to do. Eric Jones's advent health camera here as they're coming to the white. 
seeing everything spin, he made it through. And watch Chastain here. Man, he misses this inside wall so close when he spins down here. Watch how close he gets to this end of the pit road wall. And the other thing that watch I noticed. This, Kevin. But the thing I noticed from that camera angle and the sound, I never heard him lift. Nope. Not until he was in the grass. You ain't lived in the end of this race. Going for it. You think he's happy? Jeff Gordon, vice chair of Hendrick Motorsports. Ross Chastain is known for making the big move, the Hail Melon, the win last November at Phoenix. And he was probably one move away from winning the Daytona 500 tonight. It is William Byron and Hendrick Motorsports who get to celebrate the great American race. From iRacing champion to champion in the <laughs> biggest race the sport has to offer, William Byron getting it done. It's the 24 in 2024, winning the Daytona 500 after a crazy finish. Take a look at that. That says it all. Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon giving each other a huge hug. It's the 11th career win for William Byron. It is his second Daytona win, of course, the first in the Daytona 500. And as you see right there, just four laps led. Hi, everyone. Shannon Spake, Larry McReynolds, two-time Daytona 500 champion crew chief. And, of course, the, the 2010 champion over there, that would be Jamie McMurray. Listen, I, I feel like it was just yesterday that we were going, who is this kid that Rick Hendrick is replacing uh, Jeff Gordon with in that 24 car? But that is no longer the case because this kid is now a Daytona 500 champ. Well, and he's showing he can win at any type of racetrack. It doesn't matter if it's a short track, a road course, an intermediate track. And you talked about it, his 11th career win. Yeah, he's won at Daytona before, and it was his very first career win in the summer race a few years ago. But to your point, now he is a Daytona 500 champion. Yeah, and I think if we just back up to last year, the six wins he had, yeah. he was the favorite heading into the playoffs. Probably a little disappointed he didn't win the championship, but I would say this would be the best consolation prize to that, being able to win the Daytona 500. And that moment he had where he met Rick Hendrick on the infield, that's a moment he'll never forget. 100%. Yeah. It was a 1-2 finish for Hendrick Motorsports. Of course, Alex Bowman finishing second. Uh, Chase Elliott a little further back in 14th. He's with Josh Sims. Chase Elliott coming home 14th at the Daytona 500. How would you describe your night, the way things played out, and overall what it means for your organization to see a teammate win the Daytona 500? Yeah, really cool. Super happy for uh, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Obviously, a lot of effort goes into to this weekend and to uh, you know kick off the 40th season with a, with a win like that, it's got to be a really big deal. So I'm happy for William, happy for the boss. Uh, congrats to all the 24 guys. You know, William was right in the ball game all day, and you know he did the best job there there at the end, and, and that's when it pays. So uh, proud of our effort. You know, I thought we were uh, you know nice to finish one, and you know hate I uh, kind of made a mistake there, got indecisive on my lanes there on that last lap, and uh, cost us a <coughs> cost us a much better finish. I'm not sure. If I could ever got to the front row, but um, certainly would have liked the opportunity at it. But nonetheless, it was, uh, you know, thought we executed the day pretty solid, and and uh, Hendrick Motorsports got a win, so not all bad. Thanks, Chase. It's a family sport, and we have seen that family, the Byron family, alongside William throughout his career. Mom Dana, right there, giving him a hug in victory lane. What a moment! We'll be right back. All race long. We might have had to wait an extra day to get it done because of the rain in the Daytona area, but he's not a, uh, he's not uh, unhappy about that. Celebrating in victory lane right now, winning for Rick Hendrick. It's now his ninth Daytona 500 victory. Jamie Little is with the boss. Happy people down here. Of course, we have Mr. Hendrick and his lovely wife. We have Jeff Gordon. 40 years to the day, Rick. I mean, the memories, I can't even imagine that come back just seeing this young man go to Victory Lane on the, the anniversary. I'm telling you, you couldn't write the script any better, 24 and 24. And uh, it's when we think about coming down here the first time, we didn't think we should be here, felt so out of place. And to win this on our 40th to the day, it's just in time the record now. So that's awesome. 
And Jeff, I talked to you before the race. It had been 10 years since you guys won this race. You told me about this anniversary, how important it was. But I want to know what it's like seeing the 24 back in victory lane here. Uh, it's so cool. I mean, what this is going to do for this team, for Salta and all of our partners and William Byron. I mean, he just, he was already a superstar. He just went to another level being a superstar. I wasn't driving the car, but I was, I feel like I was making every lap with them out there. Um, I, it, it's just crazy to watch these guys do what they do and do it so well. And to watch them from this side of it, it makes me so happy, so proud. And uh, we're going to celebrate. This is an amazing win. Huge win. Daytona 500! I think it's safe to say it's going to be a big party for Hendrick Motorsports tonight, Shannon. I love Jeff Gordon celebrating any victory. Give that to me all day, every day. Uh, to the guys who had a front row seat for this entire event, let's go upstairs to Mike Joy. Well, this Daytona 500 came down to two short stories. The first 10 laps with the first crash of the day and the last 10 laps with the big one and then the crash right at the white flag to decide it all. Well, the last crash of the day definitely decided it all because that's when the caution came out right after they took the white flag. But it was Ross Chastain that led before the big one and it was Ross Chastain that was trying to take back the lead coming to the white flag at the start finish line, wound up getting spin, uh, spun out and, and William Byron won, won the race. What a show. Those last 10 laps, you see Logano going for it. Him and Keselowski were throwing haymakers. Who was going to get to that, you know, trying to pounce on Chastain for the lead? He was throwing the big blocks. All of a sudden at the end, William Byron, a big block on chat saying boy he shot that gap went for it that's what you want for the great american race never daytona lifted. 500 he never lifted went for it well your first daytona 500 from this point of view what do you think it was intense i i when we took the green flag the hair stood up on my arms and when they took the checkered flag my heart was beating like i was driving the car so it was uh it was exciting i appreciate both of you guys and all of your help getting through this it's been a, a great experience and i can't wait for more and now we'll roll it all together and head for Atlanta. Hey, much More like what same. we're going to see, That's this, right. another plate track. So it's going to be wild. You know it is. It's Atlanta. Intense, wild, especially the end of stage three towards the end of that race. We were on the edge of our seats. I thought the exact same thing Harvick did. When they threw the green flag at the end, my heart, I thought, was going to come out of my chest because you're so excited. You know that someone's life's getting ready to change, and, and it's William Byron's today. And, and I'm going to agree with Clint. If you liked what you saw today, Larry, we're heading to Atlanta. It's a very similar track. Yeah, it's a mile-and-a-half track. It's a mile shorter than Daytona, but it has all that banking. This is the third year that we've run the new configuration, and they do drafting there. And by the way, the last time we were there in July, guess who won? William Brown in that 24 car. <laughs> Larry Mack with the stats. He's always comes prepared. I mean, we had to wait a while to get the Daytona 500 in, but it was well worth the wait. Congratulations, William Byron. Congratulations to Hendrick Motorsports and everybody as they celebrate this big event. America's Most Wanted is coming up next. And don't forget the Xfinity Series race will be on 9 p.m. over on FS1 plus Race Hub. Don't miss us all week long, every weeknight on FS1 at 6 o'clock. Thanks for joining us for the Daytona 500. Join us the rest of the way on Fox Sports' coverage of NASCAR will be here every Saturday and Sunday. See you then. Have a good night. Start your engine. The Daytona 500 is underway.